everybody i'm ramon me here from the little pity podcast uh, this is a live broadcast on youtube uh, on google hangouts we're broadcasting the entire world and a very small fraction of those people are actually watching us at this point um <laughs> Today, it's just going to be a hangout between myself and some uh, Little RPG author friends. We're going to start off with uh, Jeffrey Falcon Logue. Uh, pull him up on the screen for you guys to look at. Say hi to everybody, Jeff. Hello. Jeffrey. Now, uh, Jeffrey Falcon Logue is the author of uh, a very familiar sci- uh, series. I'm trying to pull up the information. Yeah, there we go. Um, that's me. And here. So I'll. Uh, the <laughs> Slime Ninja Chronicles. Uh, we also have his latest uh, addition into that series, The Dungeon Wars. So there he is. Uh, so, folks, you can go check out his stuff. I, the Dungeon Wars just came out re- real recently. So, if you're a fan of his series, definitely go check out his stuff. Uh, also, on the broadcast, we have Gabriel Rathwig, who is the author of I Am Gamer, which is probably your, your most popular series at this point, right, Gabriel? Oh, 100%. And we yeah. have also the author of the Warrior Academy and Earth Online, which is probably my favorite series, just because it is so wacky and funny, <laughs> and it's it was so experimental um, going into that because you incorporated music, you incorporated like this whole soundtrack bit, and there's a bunch of um, like really quirky, crazy potty thing that go, goes in, into that series. It's one of the most original um, things I think I've ever read in our genre. I am gamer is a little more traditional. Um, it, it's, uh, alternate history stuff, but you also get some action adventure, a little bit of romance. So we're good, good, real good, really good stuff there. Um, Thanks, and Taj L is our last member of the panel today. Um, Charles Dean might be joining mm-hmm. us a little bit later. Um, but Taj L is the author of Ruins of Majesta volume one, blood and Temple cakes. We're all anxiously awaiting volume two by the way you know, you know the, the the next few days are actually up on royal road right now so, so, so you can go anybody check them out there. Can hit on the royal road and just search for ruins of majesta and it starts right where the book ends so there you go, folks. Those are uh, all our guests. And of course, I'm Mario Mejia. That's what I read in. I'm also the author of uh, Adventures in Terra, Project Alpha, and Planet Bound. Um, we just released the audiobook for Planet Bound, which is sci fi survival story with uh, snarky AI, aliens, pirates, some really fun action adventure stuff there as well. So we all have things that we would like to get paid for uh, and people to, to buy our things because we all have bills. Uh, but today we're mostly just hanging out. Uh, so feel free to comment in this, in the show notes, uh, about, um, in, in, in the notes about any questions you have for any of us. Otherwise we're just going to be talking and chat about the things that we're doing right now. Uh, so what are you guys working on? Let's start off with, uh, Gabriel Rothwig. All right. Cool, man. Oh, I'm glad we could all get together. It was, I know it was all sp- uh, spur of the moment, but that's pretty cool. You know, it's like, Hey, what's everybody doing tonight? Let's let's shoot the shit. <laughs> yeah, that's really what actually happened. Really? It's like, oh, who who wants to hang out tonight? And then someone's like, oh, let's stream this. I'm like, eh, why not? Yeah. Content. Yeah, it'll be it's fun, you know. Um, I'm actually working on Earth Online Five, actually. You know, as as a matter of fact, which I'm pretty excited about. <clears throat> um, I should finish that up in February. Right now, I'm concentrating on a new book. I'm working. I'm starting a new series. It's kind of like a. Uh, it's a Fallout post-apocalyptic lit RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a, ha- it was in the back of I'm Gamer 2. I was going to make it a harem, but it's not going to be a harem. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's how much money you could be making. I know. <laughs> I know, man. Like, dude, I could put out this harem book and hit like top top 100, right? It's crazy <laughs> how the harem's selling. Oh my God. I want to make a kitty harem. For my main character. You'd, you'd hit bestseller. You'd be a bestseller. Kitty harem. It's like I oh, love God. my kitties. I love my kitty cat. No, but great. I'm gonna I'm gonna try something new. I want to do this thing where you remember, like in the '80s, whenever you watch an action movie, there was like, oh, I don't. Like a there's like a 10 second <laughs> sex scene. You know what I'm talking about? Like sure, you no. think, like in Commando, there's like a derogatory 10 second sex scene with just some random chick. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, Die Hard has one too. Mm-hmm. There's there, there's yeah. a little small little few seconds in there. Exactly. I'm like, I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna do like 80s action flick. So instead of a harem, it's just gonna be a guy that sleeps with a lot of chicks. I'm so sorry, a lot of scenes of him of him waking up next to hot women, basically. Yeah. 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 I, I get that. Okay. 
longer, shorter, less like kind of, but you know, so I'm trying don't to, I'm trying to it. If, if he's shorter, don't spoil that for the audience. That, that should be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So well, probably, that, didn't leave in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah so that's what you're working on, Gabriel. So the, all that sounds yeah. very interesting. Yeah. I, I I have noticed actually a number of authors are working on this um, sci-fi apocalypse RPG kind of system stories as their next thing that they're doing. So I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, it, it's the same concept of like this post-apocalyptic world. It's, it's a very fascinating kind of story to tell because you're combining post-apocalyptic storytelling with RPG systems that can be very fun, especially if you want through something very popular like Fallout. So hopefully yeah, that works out for you. Out, so that's why everybody's on it, right? Like you, it comes out. We play a game. You're like, oh man, I got all these great yeah. ideas. Like, I'm inspired just, suddenly. Yeah. Is that yeah, what oh, you're, yeah. you're, you're playing? Uh, what is it? Fallout seventy six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had to stop. I had to delete it from. I had to finish. Stop so I could start writing. Man, I get, uh, too much gaming. Too much gaming. Uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, next person. Let's go with uh, Falcon. What are you working on, man? Mm, I just put out my book uh, last Friday. Uh, congrats! Thank Amen. you. Congrats, buddy. Uh, da, da, da. Hmm. So let's see. I'm divi- I, I'm kind of dividing my time at the moment because I also just graduated. So oh, putting, yeah, together, yeah. putting in together a life schedule. You know, getting some, uh, putting in some workout, figure out uh, uh, writing, see if I can get a job. You know, all that fun stuff. Wait, is an author your job? Part-time job, maybe? I haven't released anything in a year, essentially. So you just release something, so you'll get paid in that for in three months from now. Yeah, in two months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, what's, I'm working on the video game. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention. Yeah. Uh, certainly better than the version I sent you. <laughs> well, the one the version you sent me was uh, essentially the first. It was like the first two levels in a in a boss battle, uh, and I think there was more secret areas I never got to. Um, we we I, I broadcast it when I was when I was demoing it on, on the podcast and it was good music, good 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 decent action fights. You got to fight one mini bus for sure, the gargoyle, uh, which you featured in other videos, um, and it's, it felt pretty good. So if you've improved on that, I, I think it's going to be a fine game. Yep, uh, Charles Dean gave me some backhanded compliments, and I, I fixed those things. Actually, a back bearded compliment. How about that? Ooh, back bearded. Oh, cool. he just so, uh, used the tip. Of his yeah. Beard, yeah. Uh, so improve that, and it took a break in December for the, all my workers to take a break, and now they're all back working for me again. Got some amazing concept art. Got a really good PR system that Kickstarter should be coming out end of March, beginning of April. Hmm. Uh, and then I'm also working on my new book. It's going to be called Hungry Dungeon. Now is that a hmm. sequel to the Dungeon Wars, or is it no, a different this series? Is a, this is a sim- same universe, different series. Uh, I've got the first four chapters on the railroad, okay. but every chapter is going to involve a cooking recipe. Oh, oh, okay. Cool. I've actually thought of a short story of a similar concept regarding cooking before. Um, so I'll have to check out yours to see if maybe I can be inspired by it. Yeah, it's short at the moment, but I'd like that. And then I've, I don't know, probably nobody noticed since nobody bought it, but I took Hero of Knockdown off Amazon and... I so uh, I re that it. and improved it. So I'm going to put that back up, work on the sequel to that. So a lot of people have been bugging me for it. And also I work on the next Dungeon Wars book. So this Okay, so right. you have some actual plans coming from the near future. Even if you don't, don't get like a regular job, which I know you're looking for, because you have a degree in, in the thing uh, that, you, that you happen to get, um, you know, writing might help pay the bills in the meantime. Nice part-time job, you know. As long as you can get get the the ball rolling, right, guys? Exactly. Yes, you absolutely. Gotta get the ball rolling. We all love rolling in balls. Out, man. You gotta keep putting stuff out. You can't. You gotta, no. The longer the longer in between books, man, the harder it is. The harder it is. Publish or perish. Yeah, man. You know, that's one of the things that I wish I had known when I first started. I would have definitely just stayed with the serial to start off with, and then just got like four or five volumes up on Royal Road and then published. But yeah, but now that I'm published, it's like, okay, keep these books cranking. Yep. Yeah, Oddly man. enough, the people who buy your stuff want more if it's good. Mm, so, yeah. Which isn't a bad problem to have. It's just, you know, expectations yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Can't wait okay. for that review, Ramon. Oof. Yes. You're you're definitely going to think things about it. So. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like <laughs> I said, I've only started the first beginning part. I'm about 15% into it. So having, having not too far yet. 
Um, onto Taj L, Taj L, my man. How? What are you working on? <laughs> oh God! No. Okay. 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 So, of course, of course, there's Ruins of Majesta Two, which has yeah. been been a long time coming. Um, basically, at the end, I don't know how many people, but this is a little bit spoilery. Um, at the end of book one, there is a dungeon involved. Um, <gasps> yes. You know, and <laughs> book two is all about special prize dungeons. So it's going to be one of the craziest dungeons that people have put together yet so far. So there's going to be a little bit of something for everybody, whether you like platformers or undead grinds or, you know, like a uh, tower defense, there's going to be a little something for everybody in there. So there's that. I'm also uh, working on another project called the gray, hmm. more of an experience base. Uh, like, so you basically, get experience from kills and then you use that experience to buy to buy skills so like that, yeah. as opposed to leveling you know okay. so uh, yeah. that's so i'm basically just doing a you know a lot more so it actually it's actually helping me a lot to have two stories i'm working on because i'll be looking at ruins of majestic and being like where does this need to go next because that's my baby and then right. i can just turn to the gray and be like okay i can just write you out because you're not published and nobody knows who you are yet I can slap you around and <laughs> make so much fun. Other than that, I've just been doing construction, you know. So you're saying so you, have a, you have a main story, then you got a side story. You're enjoying a lot more sometimes. I'm polystorious. Yeah. <laughs> Polyliterate? What, what would that be, polyliterate? <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah. I like, I like, yeah, like polystorious a little better. I think if the S makes it sound sexier. Yeah. But you know, let's, let's see. Polyauthorist. But, uh, you know, no, we have to figure this out now because it's like, hmm, because you got to make sure you're not mixing your Greek and Roman prefixes and suffixes and do all the etymologies. On... Never mind. I'll let you guys handle that. Yeah, I'm just, I just make up words and I assume people like them at some point. I do too. I, I love making up words and hearing them thrown around is even more fun. And just because here's a cat. Oh, hey, kitty. Kitty. She's so, mad. She's so mad at me for picking her up. She's like, meow, put me down. Mm -mm. Do it again. So there we go. Oh, so we like that's a <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. There she goes. There's, a, <laughs> there's a mini boss if I've seen one. Oh, gosh. That oh, cat, that cat oh my God. That, that would be Maya's nightmare. Uh, but I don't want to fight the fluffy. Hey, uh, so Ramon, what are you working on, brother? Oh, that's yeah. right. I forgot about I, I me. Mean, I'm one of yeah. these authors too. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah. Actually, I'm working on uh, currently. I'm um, in the middle of working on Project Alpha book number two. I recently finished last year um, Adventures in Terror books one, two, and three, and I found a nice place to pause there. Um, I got out Project um, Planet Bound, which is a standalone sci-fi story, sci-fi letterpg ish story. Um, did the audiobook for that. I got that out recently with this last couple weeks. Um, and now I'm just working on Project uh, Alpha book two, and I plan to write book three and book four to finish off that series before returning to uh, to Adventures on Terra. Because I've learned that people like series and if they buy the first book in the series, they're likely like two, three, and four. And so it's less advertising costs apparently. Um, yeah. So so financially, it's, 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 it's better to work on a series and have that completed like four or five books before you start doing other projects apparently. So that's what math and, and some of these writer conferences I've gone to have taught me. I know, man, but it's so like, you can't, like, I know you need to work on like two or three or four in a series, but like you finish a book and you're like, man, I'm burnt. I can't do it in this world anymore. I can't keep yeah. thinking about these characters. I need a break, you know? Like it took me between Gamer 1 and Gamer 2, like four months to release Gamer 2. It was a long time. I usually don't take that long. I needed a break for like two months just to like reset, you know? Right. It sounds like you were really into it. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, but actually, like writer fatigue is a real thing. Like you, you're right. You you're spending like hundreds and hundreds of hours writing in, in the same world with the same and characters, and just like yeah, yeah, just like putting your oh, whole yeah. entire heart and soul and brain into this story. And then at the end, you're just like, by the for me personally, by the end of the story, I'm like, I just want this to end. That's why a lot of the uh -huh. endings of my stories are just like, bam, cut. <laughs> like I'm tired. Like that guy dead, explosion or whatever the case is. Right. That that's why my stories end that way sometimes. And my editors have had to come back and tell me, look, Ramon, I know you're frustrated, but you need to do a, a slightly better edit ending on this. 
You yeah. know what I mean? And the, the, so, yeah. You have to. You can't just throw it away. Don't throw it away at the end. You know that's what the, that's what the football teachers would tell you. Just keep pushing your legs. Keep pushing the legs. Keep pushing. There's, there's a reason that most of us end books on cliffhangers. Like legit. I mean, I'm not lying. Like, you get to the end, you're like, I'm fucking done. I'm done. I'm just done. I'm just done. out later. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like there's like. There's there's a couple times I was I'm I'm writing I finished I'm gamer and I'm like I had about five thousand more words I could have wrote and I was like nope I'm fucking done <laughs> I'm over yeah. it it's like I'm tired of this these characters give me a different yeah. role to write in and that's usually I mean that's generally what I've done it's like every day venture uh, ventures in terror book one and two and then I I dropped out to direct project alpha as a one off and it was really popular so I figured I had to come back to that at some point um, then I went back to um, adventures in terror book three. And then I got burnt out. I'm like, oh, I need something entirely different. I, I chose sci-fi as a genre. And like the weirdest thing, that was the opposite of what I was currently writing, which was like a sci-fi survival show. I'm like, oh, maybe The Martian meets Little RPG. And we'll see how that kind of goes. And that's what ended up being Planet Bound. Nice. Yeah, just, I know that after the first book, like putting out the first book and trying to learn the, the author ins and outs by myself. Oh my God. I was just like, when am I supposed to write again? I got this book out. And now I also understand uh, Naked Lunch. Anybody familiar with Naked Lunch? Good book. Um, is that just like you? Basically about how you, it's kind of sort of like writing a book is like being in a bad relationship. It really is. It's like, it starts off all fun and games. It's like, oh, look, we're doing all these things. And by the end, you're like, I just want you to be gone. You so when, you said, you when you said naked lunch, I just, I just pictured you naked eating a sandwich um, with like lettuce sticking out at the end, and like some mayo and mustard or something. It's like just on the couch watching a TV show. No. No? Okay, Wait, sorry. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that you... I eat naked. We all eat naked, right? Yeah. Everybody's naked. Oh, yeah, I have. Same. It's not like something I do every day, but you know, it's not like... It's not weird. Candy. Yeah, we're grown ups. We can do that. It's, it's but it's I also fine. live in my parents' house right now again. So oh, that's well, always then. fun. Yeah. Not so much. Hi, yeah. Avril. A uh, quick comment from the chat room. We have Avril Sabine, which says, I write between several series so I don't get bored with any particular series and look forward to returning to each of them. Um, and yeah. I think she writes the, what is it called? The Round Table. Um, I, forget, I think that's what it's called. Is so, the one with a spider on the cover, like the girl and the spider, I want to say? No. Or I no. think. Katie Hannah, I'm thinking of. I don't know. There's yeah. so many, man. so many books. Yeah, she she's an author too, though, so she definitely had knows what she's doing. So she's probably written more than all of us. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Is she in the she's romance? Too? Is she romance. Oh, this is Guardians oh. of the Round Table. That's what she writes. She, she writes yeah. with so with the, some co-authors for that particular Little PT series. That's right. That's right. I remember that one. That's like the portal. It's portal fiction. I want to say it's yeah. It's portal fiction where they're like sucked into a video game, but like no time passes or very little time passes in the real world. Um, but their po game powers don't transfer to the world with them, and it's a bunch of like teenage kids who are like essentially right. a, like a little cartridge game in there. Um, yeah. And then they go on these adventures, and they find that like there's some real world um, connection between the game world and the real world. Where, like as they be villains in the game world, um, and they level up and stuff, like real positive effects happen in the real world. And and there's an opposing force who's trying to do the opposite and mess up the real world by um, doing bad things in the game world. So it has a very interesting premise. Um, and it's I think she's on her fourth or fifth book by now. I feel like I got, I remember I remember seeing this. When I was, oh, go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm like Jesus Christ. Look at all these books she's written. Yeah, <laughs> long uh, titles. I, I was going to ask her. Are you do, you? do you remember the series Guardians of the Flame by uh, Joel Rosenberg? Yeah, is it Joel Rosenberg? Yeah, I'm thinking. But no, not Guardians of Flame. Um, the, uh, the other one. Oh, fuck. Crag Keep and stuff. You know, D and D players get sent back in time, like a '70s. This is a '70s series. On, it could on, be Guardians of the Flame that you're talking about. That that it's an older it's an older series of books. Yeah. I want to say it's Guardians. Okay, Guardians of Flame. That's what I keep on thinking of when I saw that Guardians Around Table was like the group yeah. of yeah, it's it's, Guardians the of Sleeping Flame. Dragon, the Silver Crown, Sword of the Chain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just recently did a bunch of. Uh, recovers for that series yeah that's a good series hmm? hey there we go here's, here's a good one what's your guys' favorite book or book series and then you can't cop out and say oh, i love everything because you know we all love everything but one book or yeah. book series is your favorite mm. let's start that's off with rough. uh falcon falcon looks like he's the most intensely thinking it's like no <laughs> 
So I'm going to have to make a very, very awful confession to you guys. I don't read. You're illiterate? I haven't read any lit RPG or anything in the last year and a half. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. No, we could be older. We're talking software. about lifetime. We're talking yeah. about lifetime. Yeah. Forever. Oh, Ever. oh, lifetime. oh! I've, I've I've been drowning in translated novels is the main reason. Um, that's good. Yeah. I'd have to say the the series that really just caught my eye, even though it was super long and I almost burned myself out reading it, but it was so good, is Super Powers by Drew Hayes. That's a good series. But I actually like his, the NPC series by the same author a little bit more. But I'm, I'm more into, obviously, Lit RPG than I am Superpowers. Yeah, but it was God, it was such a long book. But it was so good. <laughs> oh, Xanth? I know what it is. Oh, yeah, God. We have, uh, a couple of comments from the chat. I'm saying Eric Round said Xanth for me. Either that or Robin Asprin's The Myth oh, series. Oh, my God. All if you books. haven't read those, if you haven't read Xanth, it's great. But if you haven't read Robert Asprin's Myth series, Hilarious, like so funny, so oh funny. I miss. Yeah, I, I, I've never read Xanth, and I, I really wanted to, especially that's Piers Anthony, right? Yeah, it's so long. There's like 50 million books. I was like, somebody's at my front door. Hold on one second. Be right back. Oh, here, here's a cool bit of trivia for you. So Piers, uh, yeah, so Piers Anthony's the Xanth series. It's based in like Florida, yeah. in like the U.S. and and you can like the books you can like map out places and go go visit them and stuff it's kind of neat no don't that's, know that. cool. that's, uh, that's good yeah and and next for taj taj um what is your favorite series um that was the question i think right or book i don't know okay so uh, god because until rasmus stopped writing it might have been the name of the wind be just because Ooh. god that guy can write but I really, yeah, I like book one. I couldn't get into book two, but book one was really good. You repeat, mind repeating that? I didn't hear you. Uh, Patrick Rothfuss, The Name of the Wind. Never read the name it. Of the, the Name of the Wind. There you go. And it's, uh, it's actually being made into a television series, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, other than that, I'd probably have to say, uh, what, Sword of Truth? That series Oof. was really fun for me. Because it was, it was Zed, man. Zed made that series for me. Zed is fun. Zed, yeah, Zed is, yeah. The TV like show killed that whole thing, man. It's 7,000 reviews. Jesus Christ. Yeah. MTV. I saw, yeah. MTV, I saw, uh, I saw yeah. that TV series and it's like, oh, how could you do this to this good story? You monsters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, of course, there's all these all time favorites like uh, Wheel of Time. Um, oh, yeah. What's his name? Oh, God. And because I haven't been reading any of my normal fantasy fare. Uh, the Demon Rift Saga. Oh, uh, Raymond, Feist. Raymond Feist. Raymond Feist, yes. Oh, but I have to say my all-time favorite author is uh, Robert Heinlein. I love Robert Heinlein. So, uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Stormtrooper Troopers. Um, I, yeah, I like that know. one. That was always good. Um, a lot of Robert Heinlein stuff is his later works get really interesting. I will yeah. say, like, he, he gets like these projections of like polyamorous relationships and like, oh, yeah, for forever. Transland, man? Yeah, he does a, a lot of like, have... yeah, he, he does yeah. a lot of interesting things with the relationship and projecting them and in, uh, into the future, like hundreds and hundreds of years. When, like, we humanity's lifespan is different. We're like, we live for thousands of years. So, yeah, social customs mm -hmm. should change. But I, I always liked him for those reasons, in addition to like his good sci fi stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like, one of my favorite things I try to explain to people is there's a scene in a book called time enough for love okay. where he's actually like he he, he start that the whole series starts off the whole lazarus long series starts off with him being you know like from a group or family that is extremely long lived they all live like a thousand years or whatever he winds up being the longest lived individual in the universe he goes back in time to fight in world war one comes back to the united states meets his father and mother. And there are these like subtle clues that his mom is like coming on to him. And I'm reading this book like, no, that's not normal. That's not happening. I'm just seeing weird stuff in my peripheral. Then all of a sudden it gets down to it and he actually writes the scene where they get busy. And I'm just like. And did you find you this in like your school library? No, yeah. no, no. I, okay. No, this was, this was dollar store um, paperback. Mm. 
You know, like when you go into the 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 uh, what you call it the bookstore and they have like the dollar bin, I would just pick out the books without the covers and buy like five or six of them and then sit in the house and read all day long. Like, yeah, this is my thing. But to be able to write that scene and not have you feel completely disgusted was an amazing, masterful stroke of writing that I'm just like, people just don't get it. Take that, Back to the Future. <laughs> Futurama. It was pretty much just Oedipus, man. Like he, like you know, it's go and kill his dad, sleep with his mom, Greek tragedy shit. Like y- y- we all do the same. It's all the same tropes, over right? Hero's journey, you know. <laughs> we all do well, the same, not- same journey, different, different, you know, versions, right? Definitely. Well, when they uh, say going back to the beginning, they don't mean to your mother's. Bit. They do, they do, man. That's what it is. That's why it's like those. These are why they're like repeated. Uh, tropes in literature over every like generations and generations. Somebody writes this amazing story, and it's some dude sleeping with his mom. <laughs> like it always ends up oh, some dude. Sleeping with his mom. No, hold up there, hold up. I don't think that happens very often. If I think about <laughs> Not it, me either. Yeah. Or, or it's it, old boy. It, yeah, it, it, I'm telling you. No, no, I'm, yeah, I definitely old agree that there's nothing. On that too, has the whole electric thing going on too. Yeah, there's nothing so really new. One of my favorite time. movies. I have a couple comments from the chat room for favorite series and stories. We have uh, Jaron Frostwing says Stormlight. Um, I'm not familiar with what that series is, to be honest. Stormlight. Is that um, uh, Brennan Brennan Sanderson? Oh, it might be. You're right. I think I've seen the cover of that before. Yeah. yeah. The um, color magic. Avril Sabine says, I have a oh, soft spot for magic? fairy Ooh. tales since they're what I was reading when I realized I wanted to be author when I was a child. And that was uh, Avril Sabine. She says, fairy tales. Um, oh, my God. Do you need to read Stormlight? Okay. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you... You, Yuri Bruce says Philip K. Dick, uh, one of my all time favorites, really good stuff, of course. Uh, yeah. also says, uh, she says Faust, Eddings, Wirt, McCaffrey were some of the authors I read in my teens. And so, oh, and McCaffrey, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. Jack uh, Rattner, oh, yep. man. yeah, definitely agree with that. Uh, let's see what else we have Starlight, Sanderson, and a few other things. So, there you go. Um, next is going to be Grathwig. Uh, did, oh, did you already go for Did you already go? I can't remember. You already, did you already say your favorite authors or your favorite series? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? Do you remember uh, Sanderson also? Was, he did Mistborn too, right? The Mistborn? Yeah. 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 Yep. That was, that was, that that was, was really good. good. The way he did like the metal magic on it was so cool. How like, mm-hmm. I don't know, just like, fly with the, the magnets. I'm like, this is, this is, he was yeah. really. He, power of iron, power of lead. Tin. Yeah. Tin would give you sight, you know? So yeah. yeah. Like, that was a great the, one. At the risk of sounding sexist, like I don't usually get into like main characters as the females because like I just I always try to picture myself as a main character, and so like, it's got to be like really good writing. Get into, whoa, get whoa, into whoa. It. you can't picture yourself as a pretty woman. I can picture myself with many pretty women. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hard to get like my mind is like to become like I like to become the main character. Like there's a few like like Robin Hobb. Like if you read the um, what are those the the assassins, the assassins, uh, apprentice series. Those are really good. I like that. And then she ha- and she has a couple other ones, but yeah, great book. Mistborn, uh, yeah. yeah, I got it to share. But I just I like I don't have all my stuff up, but I have a couple of books here that I, you know, Wayward Bard. Yeah, that was yeah, Bard. Yeah. yeah. And then then there's this guy in the chat who loved this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eric Rounds, Couch Potato Chaos. Uh, quite the nice book. Those are like um, the only three books I have in my living room from that are mine. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's my turn to talk about things I stories I like. Uh, my absolute two favorite series that aren't I'm going to go with not lit RPG. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I read and review every single week. We're going and I all tons over. of stuff on that on the Little RPG podcast website. Um, so I'm going to go with non lit RPG story just to make it fair. Uh, my two favorite series are definitely going to be um, the Dresden Files. And the oh, Iron yeah. and the Iron Druid series, the Iron Druid um, sorry. Oh, so those are those are both my two favorite. Like I will drop whatever I'm doing when a new book comes out, and I'll just I'll buy it or get the audio books for all of them. Iron and I'll listen to them. Yeah, they're all um, Iron. Iron Druid by Kevin Hearn. And like those are just top notch for me stories, especially the audiobook versions of them, because I, I was getting I would I would re-listen to those stories again and again and again while I was working like uh, crappy jobs, doing like three or four hour drives each way to to and from work, and you know, so I'm like, yeah, just they have a special place in my heart. Did you watch the sci-fi series, The Dresden Files? Yeah, I liked it. I really it did. I, yeah, it was, it was really good. Yeah, yeah. I think the 
I think they're re- they're rethinking about making a new one to be honest. So I'm like, oh, we'll it see how that turns out. But yeah. Oh, I want to say two books that aren't lit up for G. Princess Bride, favorite, and then um, Good mm-hmm. Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Those are my two favorite books. Yeah, uh, yeah. the author of uh, Princess Bride just died not too long ago. Yeah, Neil Gaiman, man. That was sad. Rip. But uh, what's it called? Yeah, the uh, Color of Magic series. Oh my. <laughs> God. Oh, uh, that, 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 that. I was always hoping one of the Terry colors Pratt. would be brown and I could like see myself in that story for once, but yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually have never read the Color of Magic or the Discworld series. I watched the movies, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you like the movies, yeah. you'll love the books. The books are like infinitely better than that. The movies Dang, are, 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 are surprisingly uh, of any like story to television show or movies I've ever seen. Like the Discworld books come out the best, I think. Um, and that's usually pretty where like they, they get like the the essence of the story in addition to like the story plot lines. And if it because they're so beloved and they're so weird uh, that a lot of that is is easy to translate to to like television sometimes. And I feel I feel like Discworld like or not just Discworld but like the series is just great in general. But like British, I think like British sarcasm, British humor really translates well on paper. That's like when you read it, like when you read it, yeah, like the dry wit, it just translates better when you read it. But for some reason, like this one is great, the series is great too. But man, I love yeah. that. That's I always chuckle at my Doctor Who books. That's that's true. Yeah. And the, uh, what's called, the, uh, what's called, um, and I just said it, I just said the name of the series. Doctor Who? Yeah. Color Magic? Uh, no, not the color of magic. It was something else. Oh, Robert Heinlein. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. Oh, great book. Yeah. Hitchhiker's Guide. Hey, look, yeah, Eric Brown's answered the same question. Like, I was listening to you, Tajel. I was paying attention. It's the Hitchhiker's Thank Guide. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. You're amazing. You're totally you guys, amazing. Do you guys know Harry Harrison? Did I ever read you? Harry Harrison? Um, yes, is that, that the author, author or the book name? The author. The author. Like okay, he no. he wrote he wrote a series called like Stanley Still Rad. He wrote a series called like In the Darkness, where it's like alternate history, World War One and Two, but like fantasy, with like dragons and like tanks are like giant rhinoceros and stuff. It's he's he's really cool. He's a pretty famous guy. And oh, he yeah, look at him up. He has he has a bunch. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm actually looking at a few of them right now on on, on Amazon mm-hmm. as you're speaking. Um, I haven't read any. Of that. Um, is he the one that's inspired you for your alternate history stuff? He he's one of them. Because he, he does this thing where he you – know, do you remember the language Esperanto? Do you, yeah. do you guys remember yeah. that? He used that. He used Esperanto as a language in his book I thought was pretty interesting. Like in, uh, in the, the the space mm. series, the Stainless Steel Rat series, I thought that was pretty ingenious. Mm. My favorite alternate history writer is definitely to be Harry Turtledove. Um, oh, his stuff – is abs- so, I think he, his his stuff is really top notch. Um, I think he has a – yeah. darkness, Harry Turtledove. That's my That's my bad. No. My bad. Oh, okay. Well, see, there you go. We we both agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that he does. A, he's a lot of stuff. I'm like, oh my god. I'm just looking at it right now. I'm like, that's a lot of stuff for alt history. Like, that's his thing. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> oh, there's a that William Fortune too. He does this like Lost Company series that's really good. Like a World War, no, a Civil War company goes back in time. It's pretty cool into like this alien alien uh, world where like these giant monster Genghis Khan type writers. Take over. It's really cool. Check to check that out. That's a really good series. The Lost Regiment, I want to say. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I'm getting some new reads. Some more things that'll keep me away from writing. Just so what I books. need. <laughs> death in uh, the movies. What's death in the movies? Death, uh, the character in, in Discworld, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So, okay, so we did books, games. Anybody playing any games right now? Yes. Slime Dungeon? Is that well, besides my game. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Tekken last night. Uh, you right. have to hold that a little bit closer. I can't see what you're playing. Is that Pokemon? Oh, Rayman. Is that what you're playing? Ray- Wow. Rayman is a good one. Oh, that's the wrong Rayman. one. I was absolutely going to bust your, bust your balls if nice. you're playing Pokemon Go or, or Pokemon Let's Smash Go. Smash Brothers. Yeah. Smash this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Smash this one. Uh, 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 one. Now we got lots of lots of comments from the chat room here. We got uh, ESO, Elder Close Online, 
Uh, Dangaropona. Dangaropa. Yeah. Right. Red Dead 2. That's all. That's pretty popular. Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, Fallout 76. We have Neverwinter Nights, Monster Hunter, and Art yeah, Bob. Avril yeah. is playing a lot yeah. of games. Yeah. Well, how does Avril have so much time to write all these books and play all these games? What the heck, man? <laughs> I, I think she's calling your research. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> which, which you should. Which you should. Oh, my God. I, I watched this amazing 20-minute documentary on uh, Dead Space yesterday. <laughs> yes. oh, oh, my God. Where the uh, creator was sitting there talking about how he wanted to make a game that was completely different. And the scene where the tentacle comes out and snakes you around, he basically had to redo all of the animations for the whole game. It was crazy. If I can yeah. find it, I'll link it up. But it was great. Yeah, it's such a fun game. Uh, it it did space survival horror better than anybody else, I think. If, even, yeah. even even since then, yeah. You know, let, let's talk about that for a moment because we're moving into 2019, and a lot of the great game studios that we grew up with are now in a downward trend. So let's try to call up some of those great games from uh, let's call it the early 2000s, the golden age of games, really. Well, I don't know if it's the golden age, but yeah. it is an age. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of opinionated there. Golden age yeah. game. Yeah. I mean, hey, I was born the ninety four, so that's my golden age. At least. Okay, that's, okay. that's a fair statement. Yeah. I was thirteen when you were born, man. I've been playing games for eight years already, bro. <laughs> like, like I was macking out on on Pitfall on the twenty six hundred, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> my first thing was the Game Boy Color, so. Do you remember I was the playing first, uh, yellow? That was my back in my day, Game Boys didn't have color. <laughs> yeah, right. Back in my day, a Game Boy was me drawing chalk on the sidewalk. <laughs> Do you remember the first game where you could have a save on Nintendo? Do you remember River City Ransom? I don't recall that. No. Oh God, man! That was like a fighting game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a side-scrolling fighting game, and you could you had one like, save. Fury, you had yeah. Oh wow. Nope. Man, that's old. I'm old. <laughs> Attack of the Mutant Camels on Commodore 64. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what? Commodore 64 had some good games. Yeah, Avril on the time says, uh, Avril the says I was born in 1974, years. so my first game was Attack on the Mutant Camels on Commodore 64. So she beats us all. Um she looks amazing in her in her profile pic. Um, so, <laughs> so whatever you're using, share the secret, love. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if I shave, I'll look young. I was born seventy-five. I'm definitely not as pretty as Avril, though. I, I don't think I'll ever be as pretty as Avril. No, it's just not going to happen. No, I'm sorry. You got to shave first. But even still, I still won't be that pretty. <laughs> like, like if you like women, and there's a guy shaved, and there's a woman that's not. Yeah, she's gonna win. It's just the way that nature works, I guess. I don't know, man. The, 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 I've met some people in my life who really scared the crap out of me when I figured out they were not a woman. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had that happen in my life, too. I live in Philadelphia. I've never had the surprise after the night at the bar, though, thank God. But <laughs> I, I have had people come up and be really friendly and, <laughs> and duck their chin and, you know, hide their hands, you know, and stuff. And then it's just like, wait a minute. Like, we're all looking for love. It's, you know. No, no, no. It's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's a shock. I mean, I mean I'm not going to stop anybody from doing their thing. It's just not my thing. Right. That's okay. That's fair. Um, I slightly uh, refuse. So any, 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 so um, classic video game favorite. So what's your favorite classic video game? We have uh, one from Tasha, I think. Uh, you mentioned one. Was there different ones or favorite of yours or not just the first uh, save game you had? It's one of my favorites, but I think uh, my, one of my, my favorite game, Sid Meier's Pirates. Do you remember that? Like the, the original was on, I think it was on Amiga. Like it used to, you had a ship and you could sail around the Caribbean and get dip, and tag different ships. Little ships. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Take little pixels. Towns. Oh, cool. Sid Meier's Pirates, man. Okay, Love perfect. That. There's one from, from Gabriel. Uh, Taj, you have a favorite? Uh, Mist. Mist, Mist? Was like, Mist was like my first real, like, I'm sitting in front of the computer for hours and my parents got to tell me to go to bed. Yeah. Play game I remember when Mist used to be like the highest end looking game ever because they had like semi fully realistic yeah. like things and it was really just, just like, static oh, images oh, and like little oh. things you could touch on. It's like, but it's still like the best looking game ever uh, for the PC. Yeah. Yeah. 
But you know, uh, like I still have not finished so many games at this point. In time. I never, I never finished Mist. I got like halfway through. I'm like, okay, I'm just stuck. And um, I got three quarters, and it's just like, yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I didn't want to buy the guy. It came with a notepad, man. Ugh. <laughs> that's all you. That's all you needed for some video games. You had to make your own maps, folks. That's right. Uh, for the for the people in the audience who are, who are not as old as us, apparently. Uh, there used to be like video game that they used to give you books with the answers to the video games because there was no internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you, you, you had strategy, to, the cheat books yeah. back in the day. Strategy or you had there. to go or you had to go and buy the cheat book. Yes, or you just had to play and talk to your friends about it. Uh, and you know, yeah. heaven forbid. I still have no, my I collection in, of that. I lived in the hood. I I was the only one with a computer. <laughs> I was lucky my dad was a teacher, so I got, you know, special perks of you know, school system stuff. Yeah, nice, nice computer with all the all the base, you know C code you could write and divide the file names and uh, I, I yeah I, I got I once got a, a second hand computer from my uncle who was an engineer and I for some reason I found out like how to how to like pull out file names and I found all the secret all the secret stashes of his adult games that he had left in there by accident so I was like oh okay there fun like that's my introduction to computers you know and and and, and like coding a little bit. Still have many of the game books. <laughs> yeah. And uh, okay, so next one, Falcon. Falcon, what's your favorite classic game? Okay, this this takes me back to when my dad was a lot younger, and he All was the going back to the play video games. This was back in the late nineties, where uh, where back in the day you couldn't make a phone call and use the internet at the same time. You guys remember right. that? When the rest of us were graduating high oh, school, yeah. go on. Yeah, so my dad, uh, my dad had Windows 95. No, the big old monitors, and like it, it sounds like this computer's screaming when it turns on. Bro, you act like that's like the ancient history. That's like 17 for most of us. <laughs> no, no, let them alone. What was, what was your game, man? Leave me alone, man. Come on. Just because so what, I'm younger than everybody. What was, here. What was the name uh, of your game, buddy? Yeah. So he played two games. He played the original Neverwinter Nights, and he played oh, Warzone two, uh, 2100. Wait, what's the second one? Warzone 2100. Was that with the tanks? Yeah. The, was it like the fake 3D? Wait. I got to look yep. up the videos because I think I know what this is. Yeah. Warzone 2100. Yep. Those I still have the discs for that game, and they still work, but the very last levels are corrupted, so I can oh. I've never been able to beat it. Oh, you poor thing! It crashes. Neverwinter okay, nice. Nights just got re-released on Steam, though. So yeah, that's a not, fun game. Not a really pretty game. Like they literally just reused everything without improving anything, but it's still exactly what I remember. Too. Absolutely. Yeah, Never Rich used to be like the epitome of um Bio of, of, of PC gaming, like of D and D and like Bioware's gem. I remember all the mods you could get for it and uh create your own game modules for it. They give you a bunch of creative control over over like making your own style. I loved it for that. Yeah, Bioware was a great company until it was bought out. Who's who owns them now? Uh who owns Bioware? It's Activision. It, yeah, Activision it's made, owns everybody, probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's why gaming is going downhill. Yeah. I know, uh, Activision and um, Blizzard. Bungie but just split up. Those yeah, oh, yeah. Companies, though, so Bungie is, is taking Destiny and doing its own thing now with, with it. Um, Bioware is owned by Electronic Arts. Yeah. Okay. Well, There's one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> good games go to die. Yeah. So, okay, so... So let's go back to dial-up. So that's like 95, 96. So you guys remember that. So did everybody use AOL at that time period? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, why. That's that's why uh, yeah. That was free internet for a month. All you needed was a new disk. So this, every three weeks. <laughs> I'm going to segue into a story here. So like who played Warcraft 2? Not like Warcraft 2. Like they ever play RTSs? Yeah. Yeah. You played all the Warcraft games. I played uh, RTS, all the Starcraft but... games too, yeah. So AOL had a thing where you could play online in like '95. You could you could actually dial up and play against somebody else right. online on dial up with the Blizzard remember, with the Blizzard system. Yeah. yeah do you remember, remember how much that cost? I want to say it was like 15 bucks or something, wasn't it? It was like 4.99 a minute. Oh, jeez. Like a I minute. Lasted, a minute. Because I only lasted for three minutes, I think, which is we complained to my wife, but that's separate. Yeah. 
So you play oh, games, it'd be like 50 bucks. Love roller coaster yeah. Time, yeah, man. I freaking ran up like a $500 phone bill like the first month doing that, not realizing oh. it. I was like, oh, that's hot. Yeah. Your parents came back to you with the ballot in their hands. $500, huh? That's how we're going to work this out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was not going to play that for a while. Mm. And that could play some party. Oh my God! Land parties. parties. Land parties. But folks, yeah. you have joined the old man in the computer age uh, podcast here. Uh, we have <laughs> folks in the, in the audience who are talking about their land parties. I recall that Miss Pac-Man was his best game. Um, retro roller coaster tycoon. All kinds of fun Ooh, stuff, folks. Do you guys so, remember we used to be able to split the TV into the four quadrants? Yeah. Oh, for like Halo. Yeah. Halo, not only Halo, but like uh, Mario Kart and <laughs> All, I still put Mario Kart. Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, mm. GoldenEye. You know, I really want to figure out what what's your favorite all time cabinet video game. Ooh, like that's not my right era, man. Away. I'm curious, like if Falcon has ever played a cabinet video game. If you played an arcade oh, game. Oh, Galactica. Yeah. Galactica. Galactica? Yeah. That's a good one. That that passed. The one where you're, at the, where you're at the bottom and you know. I got a Chuck E. Cheese. Hey, Ray. Chuck E. Cheese. Hey, Ray. Uh, Ray Johnson in the chat room says hello oh, to everybody. What's Ray. up? Ray Johnson is the uh, is the host of the uh, Little RPG Audiobook co- Podcast, which uh, we produce, which I produce, I should say. Um, so it's it's a Little RPG <laughs> Podcast podcast with, for audiobooks. So hey, Ray. Okay, hey, Ray. Uh, mm-hmm. Cabinet games: Simpsons, The Avengers, The X Men, and uh, you could you have four people. Remember, you could have four people play at the same time. Yeah, um, and, and what, what the, uh, Golden Boy. Golden Axe. That was two. Oh, four? Do you remember Golden Axe? You could play four of Golden Axe. Golden Axe, yes, for the 64. Gauntlet. Horrible. No, 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 no. This was in, um, well, maybe for the 64, but in the uh, arcade, you could actually have all four fighters at once. Right. Pretty wow. awesome. Yeah. Uh, my favorite's probably going to be um, Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Ninja um, Turtles. Mm. Uh, and I always like the X Men. The X Men was really fun because yeah. again, you could have some yeah. players all at the same time. Um, I think I liked the. I, I can't remember. Could you do friendly fire on the on the X Men? Like you could kill. So. You, or maybe that was the Simpsons. I can't remember. But otherwise, I was like I killing my opponents. I, my my friends. Do it. Yeah. So there you go. My favorite cabinet games. Nice. I Dude. used to love uh, Space Harrier. Oh, that was a cool like a one. Top Gun. Like in like flight simulators, I used to love flight simulators, and then of course fighting games. Like I'm still a big Tekken fan. My kids, so my my son just got Tekken Seven like a week and a half ago. He's been practicing up. He comes over, he's like, "Yeah, Dad, I'm ready for you," because I'm like the Tekken master. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, no matter how much they change the combinations, even there's certain patterns that you know every character gets. Once you get you know those patterns, you're like, "All right, I'm ready for you," and basically just wound up like best like five out of 10 or whatever. And it's like, I just perfected him like three times. And he's just like, I hate you. I'm like, it's okay. I love you. So, you know, <laughs> it just kills up. <laughs> Is anybody playing any MMOs now or looking into any MMOs? I'm thinking about uh, getting one. Uh, you know, I'm just not a big MMO guy. I can never get into it. I played the Neverwinter MMO and it was interesting, but like, the time needed to be good at it. it was not the same as if I played a single player and finished the game and feel like a god, right? Mm. You know, yeah. the only MMO that I'm looking forward to right now is Ashes of Creation. Yeah. When does that come out? You know, I have no idea. Which I'm one? Ashes of Creation. It's a really open world, and it just seems like so I've never played MMO before, so I've never played like Warcraft or anything like that, which is like oh, wow. saying the most people I talk to. Yeah. So so I really want to play an MMO. I need to. So <laughs> actually the creation is probably gonna disappear yeah. for like three oh, months. Wow, they did a Kickstarter for that. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. I wanna pick a pick one up. I need to get one into one. It's been a while and I'm, we're freaking writing in the genre. 
it's yeah. been so long since I played one, you know? It's like, I got to get re- – it's been so long since it's, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I want to pick up Terraria again, too. Oh, like yeah. Ashes, I feel like Ashes awesome. of Creation has had, like, multiple release dates that they haven't met for the full game. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. That's, that's, that's the issue. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, no. August of 2018, October. I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. It looks really cool. Though. The 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 creation, the, the class system is really cool Cool on it. Yeah. I'm pretty interested in that. Uh, but as far as MMOs, I, I've played a ton of MMOs. Not as much anymore because, they, again, they do, like Falcon said, they, they require a ton of time to like invest into levels and clans and everything. I'm, not, I'm, I'm more of a single-player kind of campaign guy, but I've played um, – T- too many to remember to be honest uh used to be my entire teenage years was playing mmos on on, on my computer uh, all the time and and passing classes barely um but uh yeah more, <laughs> most recent ones i probably played are never winter online um i wanted to, I, I thought about playing fallout 76 just haven't purchased it because again no no time um i'm writing books and reading them mostly um, but nothing really has been catching my interest for like a really long time. Cause like after, after a while, it's just like the same thing. It's like, Oh, it's a bunch of grinding. It's a bunch of questing. Um, and the stories are just like not super amazing. So unless you have a bunch of friends that you play with on a regular basis, it's like, it's, it's, I, I have a better storyline with like single player campaigns. See, I want to find, like, I'm waiting. Cause I think Ashes of the creation, you can like go somewhere. It's so open and you can build yourself a base with friends, you know, kind of like yeah. an arc, but there's more to it. I think. Like, I really wanted to get a, get get into a game like that. Yeah. Also like, for yeah. me, Little BG is just so much better than any yeah. MMO. It's like like uh, for me, Little BG has replaced all the things. You know? it, it represents all the stuff I wish MMOs were and VR games <laughs> and all that other stuff. So that's yeah. probably part of it for me as well. Because VR MMOs are completely different from MM- MMOs, and it's like we're all just like waiting for that day where we can dive into like a gel bath and be like, "Take me away." <laughs> Oh, oh, did you? Okay, uh, this is totally not, this isn't off topic, but it's kind of on topic. Did you hear Elon Musk announced like he's like months away from releasing his neural net? I'm sure he says that about a lot of things, uh, like months and months away from the cover car and from the from the tunneling under the earth to, to make things. And he, he's a big dreamer, and we'll see how that turns out. Uh, I have a couple comments from the chat room for, for games right. and MMOs they played. We have um, AOE. Um, was one and anyway two. We have also from Avril S E S O um uh, Elder Scrolls Online. We also she actually plays RuneScape Classic sometimes, which is a very fun game. <laughs> um it's the end. Yeah, yeah. A A O E. So there are a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, Elon Elon Musk and his neural net. We we hope that's true. We we all know it's probably not though. Well, okay, so he's got, his, he's got he's, he did the tunnel, like the mile underground for 10 million which is like 90 million under budget i mean i don't know he's got the, the, the rocket the the the, uh, the falcon rocket did it's like landing stuff it's doing well yeah they only fail and crash a few times out, out of out of out, you know, so. you gotta, you gotta break a few things man just saying i'm just you know, saying like, overall, i don't want to be one of those breaking things with the neural net in my brain yet it's, 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 <laughs> well you know that would be a great story what do we think <laughs> Like, I was one of the first beta testers. I've been stuck in the black beta beta yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm here's a question. Beta. So they go, hey, we're beta testing the neural net for this immersion, full immersion MMO. Are you in? Do I get paid? No. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. Can I write a story I, about it afterwards? I would, I would probably say yes, personally. I would. I would be like yes. I'm. I'm always one of the guys that, if it's proven at least moderately safe, I'll probably go in for the for the full brain implant for virtual reality for full immersion. I would totally oh. go Matrix style, like implants and everything. It's not. It's not proven safe. You're the first <laughs> test. It's like you're gonna go first. Hey, you get to go first. We'll give it to you for free. Are you? You're in. You're in. I would probably be in. Yeah. How about you, yeah. Jeff? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, we're gonna be yeah. trying to be some ins- life insurance on this. No, no, nothing. You're in or you're out. Is this it? Oh, hey, no way, man. So if I'm the provider for my family, I need to have some insurance in case you brain dead me. Falcon, nothing. Falcon's a no, I guess. Uh, I'm a yeah. yes. Um, Taj, what do you think, man? Where would you be a yes or a no if you got a uh, alpha spot on the brain interface thing? Okay, so here's here's my little caveat. If it has like any type of battery powered things that go in your head, I would probably say no. But if it's just like 
metal wires that link up to certain areas of your brain and they stick a probe in and they, you know, read that information, I'd probably be okay with it. And the only reason for that is because I have a severe fear of electromagnetic pulses. You'd kind of be under though, so you wouldn't even know. But well, you don't no, know. No, no. But you know, under. like somebody sets off a dirty bomb, you know what I mean? It's like the electromagnetic energy is just going to and it's going to fry Ooh. inside of my brain. And that okay, is so Taj is yes with the caveat that there's no um, connected battery system. Okay, that's yeah. fair. Uh, what about you, Gabriel? Oh, I'm in, man. I mean, I, I, I write about it, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. I'm in. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. I mean, okay. uh, well, there you go. You know, okay. they about something else before. They have like mice and monkeys and stuff. You know, they, they, so hey, let's go. I feel like he's thought about this a lot more than the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we have a couple answers from chat room as well. Um, Ray <laughs> says, hilarious. says, no way I would go after they work out the comas and the deaths. Um, Ray Johnson says, you end up like the MC in Domino Fins after, right, Afterlife, don't beta. Um, Eric Brown says, yeah, I'd probably do it. I need a computer in my brain. Avril says, hell no. Someone else can be a guinea pig. Uh, smiley face. And you were very says, I work in IT. Shit never works the first time. And then exactly. Really, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and Eric's going to be playing Super Mario with his brain chip. Mm -hmm. Man, come on. Go to the ATMs, Eric. At least hit the ATMs. Oh, like you, like what would you do with Techno Mage Powers, basically? Like he would play video games and you'd go to the ATM like, my money, just give it to me. Oh, no. If I had Techno Mage Powers, I would just basically start moving stuff out of people's accounts, you know, putting it into Bitcoin. Okay, there you go. Don't want find it. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's for your new techno thriller with the, where your main character levels up his techno mage powers. What does he do with his real life RPG powers? So there you go. Techno mage or elemental mage? Who would you rather be? Techno mage? Because uh, we live in a technological world. Yeah, it definitely has to be techno mage. Yeah, I mean, we a suit of armor. You could be a Gundam as a techno mage. <laughs> <laughs> what would your weakness be, though, as a techno mage? Sleep. Um, in, in unreliable internet, uh, water. Magnet. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, electromagnetic pulses. I hear those are bad things. Computer <laughs> virus. You like malware. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, these pop up, pop -up, yeah, pop -up. Yeah. folks. Yeah. That's what I get for using my brother's computer. Ah oh. <laughs> Who's the play with a techno mage? <laughs> that would be hilarious, the story of a techno mage whose brother uses his computer to like go look at happy pictures and gets it all malwared up right before his big project. And next thing you know he's stuck. He's like stuck with these really glitchy techno magey powers like he'll try to grab something but as he does so a pop-up will appear and it just says you can last for hours <laughs> even worse even worse what if it turns him into the accidental pervert and he starts walking around and you hear for 2.99 a minute you can <laughs> he just walks into a classroom next thing you know the projector kicks on and it's like, you can call us at 18-year-old chat book. Mm. <laughs> Everybody turns around to look at you, and you're like, mm. it wasn't me. It's the malware. <laughs> oh. Have you guys all watched Black Mirror? I've seen a few uh, episodes. I've heard about it, but I've never seen it. You should How definitely watch it. That? How do you feel about that, that whole, like, hacking your brain kind of thing like like it's they're they're all variations of basically they screw with you in the techno yeah. world like they put it, the brain thing on or whatever blah 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 right like, no, basically very well, are we talking about a specific oh. episode or overall if you look at your computer your phone when it's turned off it's a black mirror and so that's what it's based on the technology and the twist that it can do um my favorite episode that i've seen is definitely the star trek ripoff where like he's making copies of people, um, their brain scans and putting him into his own private, um, like Star Trek ripoff server, where he's like, where he's the captain and everybody else is his servant, and they have to live there forever under his like control. Um, it's it's one of like my favorite like sci-fi episodes of anything I've ever seen. It's a, it's really fun, interesting, but also gives you that Trekkie vibe. 
I was using it to watch it. Somebody mentioned like, the episode Bandersnatch, which is like the Black Mirror uh, choose your own adventure yeah. version. And so I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, they're definitely being sued for that one. Netflix is yeah. owned by the people who own the, the, the trademark of Choose Your Own Adventure because that's what they used in their advertising campaign. So I thought uh, that was too. Uh, they should not have done that. Yeah. It, it's funny, like to, right before I saw that they were getting sued, I was like, dude, I'm going to write a Choose Your Own Adventure story. I'm going to do that. And I was like, I'll set to do it. I'm like, oh, I guess I can't do that. No, you can't use the no, you can, you can do a, yeah. You can do a pick your own pain story, though. Yeah. So I had this idea because I, I started writing this new story and I didn't name the main character. Specific, specifically, I had every character he interacts with not actually name him. So like, what if I get to a point where you can choose like good or bad and name the character and I can write two variations. If you choose bad, you go this way. If you choose good, you go this way. I was like, that'd be fun. And then yeah. do the arches. But I'm like, that's just too much writing. It's a lot of writing for like your branching pathways of like, yeah, yeah. Say, we put Angel Ramon on the floor. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the yeah. Angel is late. Why are you on the floor, man? You should be in bed. That's really late for me, right? Callister is like, it's late here. I, I actually, I have to uh, leave in a, about 15 minutes, but is it, is it daytime behind you, Falcon, that I see in your window there? Oh no, that's that's the light. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> I was about to say, shoot. At this point, it's starting to get dark outside for you too, Ramon. Oh no, yeah. Actually, it's really dark here early, like um, like five, five o'clock. o'clock. Yeah, five o'clock for uh, yeah. for her. Yeah, man, it is just nasty out there. I I'm at the bottom end, so no rain or snow, but like it's gonna be cloudy for two weeks. <laughs> hey, bro. Welcome everybody. Hey, Mr. Carlson. Kind of yeah, cool. Folks in chat, we get Emmy Carlson, uh, Andrew Ramon is popping in and out. Um, all kinds of nice people in the chat room. He thought it was drinking with Charles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Taj, when are you doing the audio for uh, Ruins of Majesta? Have you done that yet? Um, so I just got, well, Tim Markowitz gave me the uh, edits back for Majesta, and I was in the middle of a build and just didn't have time. So I'm going to be starting on the edits for that this week. And hopefully getting it, just knocking it out this week, getting it to uh, Annalise Rennie, who's going to be doing the book, because she's been waiting for it since the beginning of December. So it's like, oh, okay, I'm just dragging my feet, making myself look bad. Okay. That's okay. So looking, let's explain the process for people who don't know how audiobooks work. Uh, you, you have your regular audiobook, your regular novel, and you want to making it an audiobook, what process did you go through to, to find an audiobook narrator? A lot of us use ACX, but you might have used something else. Um, actually, I was approached by Annalise, which is kind of nice. Oh, so she approached you directly? She read the book and she was like, hey, you want me to do this? And I was like, yes, please. Perfect. Like, I was actually not going to do the audio book for a while until I got a couple of books out because it's actually kind of cost prohibitive. Yeah, if you're doing a pay per finished hour where essentially you're paying the audiobook narrator per hour of finished work that they do. So for a 10 hour audiobook, it can be potentially thousands of dollars or 20, you know, whatever it is. Exactly. Uh, alternatively, you can do a royalty share split, which means that you're splitting the royalties you get from Adam, uh, Audible between the two of you and whatever percentages you, you guys work out. But I assume you, did you go with split? Which you're already splitting with Audible. You're already she splitting. Was, she, was very, she was very kind to me. She was very kind to me. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm going to say, but she was very okay. kind to me. That's perfectly fine. I understand that. Yeah. Did, you, did you go with royalty split or um, paid per finish hour? Royalty split. Perfect. And that means you have less of an investment as far as like paying her. And then she's going to just get take percentage of the profit. And that for a lot of uh, authors, that's a really good way to do it. Like you make, yeah. make us more money, obviously, if it does really good, but you have less of a risk as far as like a financial risk in, in paying somebody to do it, whether you mm-hmm. know it's going to succeed or not. And so those yeah. are, those are ones. So, but you also mentioned that you're doing, you did editing on it first. Um, yeah. So basically I'm doing a rebrand for it as well. Got new covers. Um, because I've realized that the cover just doesn't really attract that many people. I, like, I think it's beautifully artistic, and I personally love the visuals of it. Um, but as far as like attracting readers, yeah, it's a lot of hard. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm redoing that like that, so that's getting redone. Um, so at that point, I'll be coming out with the uh, paperbacks because I still haven't even done the paperbacks. So I'll be coming out with the paperbacks, the audio books, and uh, what's called shortly followed by book two and hopefully this third book as well so i'm just trying to pound away pound away at it all 
Yeah. How far yeah. along on book two are you? Huh? How far um, along on book two? Wait, I gosh, I'm about a hundred thousand words in. How long is it going to be? Get, it might be longer than the first one. Jesus. Uh, that's why. That's one of the reasons why the second series is there for me because, you know, like I sit and I pick and I knit and you know, it's like, uh, I don't like this the way this is going and, you know, and then all of a sudden I come back and it's like to the gray and it's like, okay, I'll just keep writing this, you know, because that, that, like I said, I, I feel like I can like slap that one around like she's just a dirty little girl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes you gotta have something. You just get in quick and dirty. It's like, I, like that one. I'll fix in editing. You know, right. where Majesta right. is like, no, this needs to be perfect as I write it. It's right. so one you, of the worst things to do. But I edit while I write Majesta. I just can't help it because I'm always going back and checking. What was that stat? How many pieces of this did they have? Because it's you, crafting based, so I have to maintain resources. Like, do you not like, write that down as it goes, or do you just like reference oh, your I, material? I do write it down as it goes, okay. but then you know you start getting to something like, wait, how many spools of thread did she have? Like, I don't like I have not created a full inventory list, which is one of the reasons I probably need to create a full inventory I'm like, list. Excel is wonderful for that kind of stuff. Like you just keep track of it and you just make more and more pages. I have like 20 pages of like inventory list for each chapter. Like each chapter basically you take a snapshot of what happens at the end of that chapter. So if I need to go back and reference something, it's just, oh, oh yeah. Well, start, well, start, like, chapter, like stat pages, inventory skills, all that good stuff for each character. Um, and it's just like, it's just pages and pages of Excel sheets. And yeah, pretty much. And one of the things I do is like, sometimes I'll be like, oh, this part didn't get released yet. Let me go ahead and, uh, you know, go ahead and add this little fudge on day 10. Oh, and then I can go back to day 11 and make it all happen. So it's nice that way. All right. Right, definitely. Uh, so that's good. So you said you're editing now. Um, so you're redoing the edits to make it cleaner a little bit, and and just for the first book, yeah. So right. um, the second book, I'm still in in progress. Right. So that's good. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's nice to have the two come because you can use the um, release of the audiobook to promote book two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so that can be a nice, especially if you're going to rebrand it. Yeah. And if I can get it done in time. Hopefully, I can have Annalise do audiobook two as well, and just yeah, that way for be, all the audiobook feeds, they'll be like, "Oh my God, there's two of them! Let's do it!" Right now, that's definitely better for the brand. For that part. It, yeah. So it should take her like a couple of weeks to a month to actually record it, and then it's another three to four weeks to actually get Audible to approve it. So um, as soon as you're done with reading, you know that audiobook could be out in up, you know, as soon as two months. Yep. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pound it out. I also got told by my editor that I have a uh, ellipsis fetish. An ellipsis fetish. <laughs> well, you do have some sexy ellipses. I know, but ah, see what you did there. But it's funny because I just haven't found any way to pause speech like an ellipsis. Like an ellipsis is like, well, why did you? Ah, oh, you did that. Ah, oh, you did. Yeah. And you know, it's like, I'm a you, mean dash. Yeah. you could use dashes. I don't like the dashes. You know, I use, I, I use M dashes too, but M dashes usually mean that it's like you're, you're adding one quickly. Like, so it, yeah. it reads like, and then we went into the room because we had to go into the room because John was sitting there, you know? So, and this is a bunch of writer talk readers are like, I don't care. You know, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's, I don't know. He's like, he, he, he tells me that it makes my story a bit comic booky, but I'm like, my story is a bit comic booky. Like, yeah, I don't mind. All of our stories are kind of comic. Could be they're very much fa fantasy, wish fulfillment stuff. We have a bunch of superpowers, and we call them game powers. And so, yeah, comic, like, comic booky, video gamey. You know, I mean, that's the yeah. whole point. Literally, we're, we're ripping our stuff off from. Yeah, or I mean, we're inspired by heavily from things. Yeah. And the <laughs> thing is, I'm the, the gray for me is great because it's going to be a lot more adult, <laughs> which is going to be great. So. There'll be some f bombs in that one. So we got a couple questions from the chat room. Emmy Carlson says, "Is uh is cut off ellipse is a pause for speech? So dash is cut off. Ellipse is a pause for speech. Um, I'm probably like the worst person in the world to know any of this stuff. I'm not a really good writer, uh, so I'm like I use like three little dots, uh, and my editor will change that to like a, a an end dash. I'm like, okay, I didn't know what that other thing was, but thanks." Mm -hmm. 
I love the M dash. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, let's see. One sh question for me actually it says, um, "You or Russ says uh, they they just looked at Project Alpha, looking for, for Project Beta, which is a great book name. I'm not using it, but Project Alpha <laughs> Book Two is what be called. Um, Project Beta so it actually makes more sense, but I didn't come up with it, so I can't use it. Um, and but she has the, they have the question of is Armand's sister going to be into the dungeons? Um, I mm. thought about it in progress, so I might throw her in at some point. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. I don't know. Uh, in the future, maybe. We'll have to find out. I don't know yet. So again, if you have questions in the audience for readers or for the authors, feel free to ask them. I'm sure they'll be happy to answer. Oh, oh. I'm reading Eric Rounds' comment. He says, my editor took away all my M dashes and turned them into comments. Uh -huh. oh. Or it's like comma, and she did this thing, and comma, the continued speech. And I'm like, you know, there's so many ways to write things. I'm finding out. I'm like, oh. Yeah. There is, it's, and it's a, that's an amazing thing in and of itself too. Oh my God. Ah. Well, they just like the proper way to write what you're supposed to with right grammar and, and stuff. And that's how we should do it. But then, I don't know, I write the way I talk and the way I think, and that's how it comes out on paper. So like people knock me for my grammar all the time. I'm like, well, you know, that's, that's the way I fucking talk. Like, Pretty much. I think uh, Chuck Palahniuk is the best example, man. He just writes crazy ways, and it works. It's enjoyable. Some people like it, some people don't. Because holding holding dialogue to grammar rules, like, yeah. like unless people can't understand what your main character is saying, then you shouldn't worry about it too much, you know, because people speak in a certain fashion. Yeah, and that to me just seems to make sense. Like, oh yeah, you know, sometimes you you have to go back in and tweak it just to make sure that the understanding of the sentence is clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, like dialogue is wretched, and 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 just just because I think everyone should watch uh, Adam ruins everything. His thing about grammar rules. Just look up Adam ruins everything grammar. He basically goes back and shows how the words that are like grammatically correct nowadays were actually created by one guy who didn't yeah. believe lunch was a word. I don't mean dialogue. I mean like just writing in general, like it's basically just the way my mind travels. So no, it's gram not. grammatically incorrect a lot. I think yeah. uh, was speaking to me directly because I happened to mention some grammar issues in the last review of, of the gamer too. No, a hundred other people, man, you and a hundred other people. Yeah. No, I, I mentioned it mostly because like there are a few places where you're like, your words just weren't the right words. It's just like like spell check failed you basically, and he's like, no, oh, this is a real word. Just just the right one here. So I'm like, no, okay, I, 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 not even just that. I accidentally I, I uploaded the copy that I did in Grammarly first. I was like, oh, that's stupid. But no, I'm just talking. Just even after that, like just the way my sentence structure and stuff flows, it doesn't flow right, and I don't use commas the right way. I don't I don't do the right grammatic things and I end sentences with prepositions and I do all sorts of shit you're not supposed to do, <laughs> but. And that's, that's okay. Right, so what, I, what's a play they get from their, from their readers for their stuff? Cause I know we all have, I know we have reviews where the, like the common things like, Oh, I don't like this about your story or I don't like this thing about your story. Um, what's, what, what each person's like biggest uh, complaint from reader for me, it's always going to be, uh, I write in first person present and, some readers just can't stand that at all in any way, shape, or form. They're like, they were two sentences and they're like, nope, I'm done. See you later. One survey. I'm like, sorry. I'm like, okay, that's just that's how I write. I'm not a real writer. Um, I just, you know, what I felt like you're not a real writer. I'm not, I'm not a real writer. writer. I mean, I'm a writer. You get paid a, to write stories, man. You're technically you're a real writer. Claim that, man. <laughs> you're claim that. You're um, more right. a writer. Writing is hard for me because I, I, I'm a math and science guy and I wouldn't do it to create a writing when I was growing up. I didn't do any of it. The first thing I ever wrote creatively was Adventures in Ontario book one. That's literally the first thing I wrote. I, I put it through Grammar and I put it through um, like spell check and had some, some people beta read it for me, basically. but then I just uploaded it. And, and so it, it, it looks like your first novel that you've ever written um, and it, people just like it and that's great. But it's also oh, no. just like, I always admit my limitations because um, I, I know what I can can do. That's why I hire editors to make my so stuff. Ramon, I have to challenge you now. I have to challenge you to do a project where yeah. you write short stories. And I'm only going to say short stories because writing a whole novel is crazy. But write a bunch of short stories from different perspectives. Just and like challenge all yourself. 
person perspective story and the first person past tense story and the second person tense story. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because also keeping track of that tense is like so tensifying. It's like, ah. Yeah, so that's, that's, what, that's, that's my biggest that's complaint for my probably the people who try my stuff. It's like, oh, I don't like first person present. I'm just out. So what what are your guys' biggest complaints for your stories? Let's start off with uh, Falcon. You is know, it they don't, like, they don't like purple? You know you got five things right now top of your head. You're yeah. just waiting to spit them out because we all do. We all do. We all have, like, you know, just the majority of people just didn't I, – I feel – because I, I, my, my stories get compared to Dakotas all the time. And the majority of what I see is that Dakota heavily outclasses me in, in humor, definitely. I'm not a humor guy, uh, but also in just enjoyability. And, you know, it's, it's hard to get that comparison sometimes, but you know what? He I mean, wrote a good book and he's continued to write a good book. But I, when I, with my book, too, I went away from my original premise and I continued that because I wanted to and I did it, but a lot of people didn't like it, but so, I've returned to I that think, with a new book. So I think you, that, that that's probably the one I see the most comparison of, uh, uh, for the reviews for you is like, Oh, he's, it's not really just a dungeon book anymore. He's, he's branched off into these other things like town building and whatever else and adventure and everything's taking place out of the dungeon. Um, so I'll, but comparisons, do you always just like, I wrote the dungeon books first? Is that what you say? Yeah. No, because I, I, that feels like a dick move. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, and the two of you are friends. I want to be this perfectly clear. There's no rivalry between the two of you. The two of you have talked before. You you guys have both done booths together at Dragon Con before. So you guys have hung out and you're both super friendly with each other. There's no like rivalry at all. Before this video. I think you guys actually at one time talked about doing a, uh, a co-author book where it was his dungeon, the Divine Dungeon, versus the Slime Dungeon at some point. Oh, yeah. I wrote a chapter for that, but, you know, it never happened. And then he got more successful than me, and he I don't think he needed to do it with me anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's definitely more big. Not that you're, like, not doing well, but he did a production company. He has a publishing company, and he has, like, multiple authors who are who are publishing under his, his – well, have- his Amazon page, he's a ranked author. <laughs> yeah, he does really well. Like his last book came out, um, Rise of Rex, and you know, it's almost top 100 right off the bat, and it's still like top, um, like Is top 500, like, and even now, like multiple weeks later. Oh, he kills it. Dakota's yeah. killing it. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all happy for him. We're all, I mean, Dakota's like the nicest dude in the world if you've ever met him in real life. So, if his, he's got a cute baby. He does, which he put in his book. Uh-huh. We really? Yeah, he, he put he put her name in the book as, yeah. Mm. yeah. It, 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 this is my thing right now, man. There's so much readership going around. There's so much there's so much food for everybody to eat. There's no reason to be jealous of anybody else because there's oh, so many people that are reading. There's no like there's no reason to like to be like, man, this your book sucks, mine's better. It's like, no, man, everybody's gonna there's so many people reading, they're gonna read yours and mine and his and hers and theirs. And everyone's everyone's gonna read it. Yay. I think in our, in our genre in general, I think most of our most of the authors aren't jealous of each other. Like my success is doesn't take away from someone else's success at all. Like we're all generally concerned about our books doing our books doing well when we right. put them out. Like always nervous about like is this going to be the one that tanks is this one that fails um and they usually do pretty decently obviously but um there's no like general like i want you to fail because i don't like you but it's between two individuals well, no, i mean like i'm not saying there are personality conflicts i'm saying that there aren't like professional rivalries like oh I, i'm jealous of your success necessarily it's, it's always like there are other issues obviously in any community writers or creatives but i don't think that's really a big one for our community because we're all usually generally super supportive because we all started out really small and so now I think we- you're you're right for now but like when we're hitting this point where i know blaze talks about it in facebook all the time and everybody's always talking about it, but we're, we're hitting that saturation point where there's so many writers mm-hmm. there's so many people in here and now there people are trying to like fish for money and trying to like like it's getting kind of sharky so like we're hitting the point right now where it's about to get saturated with douchebags that's why i, I try to see, keep separate from the whole main oh. section well, of everything 
I'm not. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't predict the future. I hope that's never the case. Yeah, man. Just, you know. where community changes, obviously, but I'm always hopeful and try to promote a good, a good positive attitude in our community. That's all you can really do. Angel, Angel's leaving. Have a good one, brother. See you, See you bro. See ya. Be safe. Sorry. Go ahead. So there you go. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see now there are people in the audience who are asking like, who are the rivals? I want I want the cheese mosa. I want the I want I want the <laughs> gossip. Of- Yuri Bruce says uh, what's the rivals? Rivals? we just gotta yeah, say no. Yeah, we don't we don't what need to talk What should you read as a new lit RPG fan? Yes, yeah, so there are always great titles to read in lit RPG. What do you guys it I'm always asked the question like, oh, if I want to introduce lit RPG to my friend, what's the one book? That I could recommend for them to read as a, as a new reader, as like the introduction primer to Little RPG. Do you guys have novels that you can think of? Oh, um, I think it's the end of the last. For the, y, for the YA crowd, I usually suggest Awaken Online because Travis has the you know the the younger readers on lock. For somebody who's like a book monster, I'll probably send them the chat field. Like here, go read in Morelia. <laughs> There's eleven books there. I mean, if they wanted to enter Dungeon, then I could hey, even you- recommend mine, Dakota's, Rogue Dungeon, uh, William and Aaron. The- it's easy for Dungeon. I, I can't say for just general lit RPG. Definitely Greystone. Oh, and Greystone is finished now? Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah, Greystone. The ending was so good. That was a definite oh, final ending. I, I'll say that. There's a there's definite finality to that, to the Greystone Chronicles written by Dave Wilmarth. I think um, yeah. Russian books are good too. Yeah, I'd always actually like um, Way of the Shaman book one, specifically just the book one as like a, a really <laughs> good introduction. Like the rest of the books are really nice, I'm saying, but book one does is the easiest introduction into the game because it's it's a very small yeah. pers- one person story, basically. He's, he's in the jail most of the time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you get your crafting introduction, you get your level stuff, and it's all there and it's all very gamey. Um, but it's also like I a good introduction. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, don't spoil then, what, Eric? And he does other things. So, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's nice. Uh, so, it's Way the Shaman for me, probably for one of the good introductions. I, I mean, without saying my own stuff, because I've, I've kind of crafted it to be very good on the introduction side, but that's not, that's a bias, obviously. So, what about uh, you, Gabriel? Um, so, probably going to get a little bit of hate for this. But when I read Ready Player One is what made me start looking for Lit RPG. Because I read... Ready Player One, 15, when when it came out, whenever it came out, like 10 years ago, like about 10 years ago. And then Alter World, was that the first one? I want to say that the first Russian one? Alter World played to live. When I, when I remember Lit RPG, well, before Lit RPG, because Alaron was the one who gathered everybody together for that. It was, it was Alter World. It was bathrobe night. It was first the, two, right, first two. It was the dragon. Oh, the, the, the dragon's wrath. There we go. Wrath. And, uh, yeah. Bruce, where is that guy? Stuff. I'm worried about Brent Roth, man. He just put out his new book. He just put a new book out. What? Really? He just put out the new book. What? Daniel Black? No, not him. No, no, no. no. Daniel Black. Uh, uh, Daniel Black. Daniel Black put I'm out. About a to book. hang up. I, I, I did I did read the new Daniel Black, but no, uh, Brent Roth who did Dragon's Wrath. There's like three books. Yeah, yeah. His books are gone. Also, I, I yeah, think I, I, yeah. it's a contestant. A lot of us think he might have passed away, um, so that's why he's not continuing the story. But that's that's rumor as far as I'm. I I know. But you know what? We would as a community. I'm pretty sure we would continue to keep pushing those books to make sure they kept selling if somebody stood up for him. I, I did a discussion with um. With another author who was here on the podcast, we did a uh, a spoiler review of his novel, um, and we, we, our, our question was like, who who would you pick to continue writing um, Dragon's wow. Wrath series? And I was like, uh, I forgot the name of the author now. Um, Ugland, it was his name. His last thing he did, he does the, he does the good guy series. Um, I was like, oh, Ugland would, would, would be good. He, his writing style and like his world building is very similar to what Dragon's Wrath is. So I'm like, oh, he would be a really good choice. Um, what about you guys? Who would you pick to continue Dragon's Wrath? I can't remember. Can you give me yeah. a synopsis real quick? It's been drag- it's so good. Sure. Dragon's Wrath is... Eric, uh, Eric Uglin just said me. 
Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, man, totally. I, I picked you out. I was like, I did. Eric Uglin's novels, the Grey series, was such a surprise hit with me. Like his covers, they're very apic covers, and you, and you don't think you think it, like the, the story's going to be a little kiddish or something, or like lighthearted. And his stories are very well crafted. He has a lot of good world building, good game mechanics, and I've always spoken very highly of his series in every single one of my reviews. And each story kind of gets better and better uh, for me. And like his, just like the world, his attempts to world build. And like the depth of his story, I'm like, oh, this is like really good. He always reminded me of 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 of, of, of Dragon's Wrath in that respect. And like, I felt like, oh, he could, if he had access like his notes or something, he could probably do the story justice to continue it on. Um, but that, mind you, that's just my opinion, obviously. But um, any, anyone else you guys would pick? I don't know, man. That's that's a hard one. It's like one of those things. Like, should I touch it? <laughs> I don't know. It's just just. Oh, is that the one I, where like get like a like a, he was sick and he had to get his he sold his sports car, and like he was he like he goes in the game and builds his like into the uh the cold he like starts in the cold. He he starts yeah. he goes to the north exactly. yeah, yeah. where nobody else is, and he builds a community there. Um, he basically starts okay. up as a regular single plan campaign. He's a part okay. of a beta with like the latest and greatest virtual reality yeah, yeah. system. He goes to like this, okay. like this grouping of gathering of beta re- or beta testers, and then logs into the game, and he chooses like somewhere far off into the north. He eventually yes. gets um, yeah. like this unique power um, by like doing this like weird challenging, going on top of like the highest mountain ever, and he gets like yeah, yeah, yeah. Power, and then he even like, you know, climbing um, up, yep. builds like his whole that's community. It's that's the really first that's been done in that game, and he's using it the best advantage to possible. Um, and it's a, it's a beloved game because it's a beloved series. Just be, the author did, w- was one of the first people who did community building. He's the first one who yeah. did like, that kind of stuff there. And I think it was really mm-hmm. something that, uh, special place for people. Actually, that yeah. was God, God. Some of the raids he pulled, man. Some of the raids he pulled were epic. Yeah. Oh. I'd like to point out, though, you remember back in the, those early days, it was hard to pick out the just straight lit RPG or game lit from, from some of the erotic stuff. It, a lot of it was kind of intermixed back then. It's still well, very, interim, it's still very intermixed in that people who write um, sexual stories, like you know, sex, and it's just in the virtual reality, but they think it they label it as little RPG um, or harem or whatever the case is, and and they're not really little RPG, um, but those still exist. That uh, all that is still there. Um, to believe me, I look every day, and it's like, oh, I look anyone. Yeah, we got questions from the audience there. We actually have um, Ray Johnson said he'd recommend VGO by Hunter, Reading Get Online, yeah. as his introduction novel for anybody who wants to get into Little RPG. It's a really yeah. nice series that actually has a really quick premise in getting people into the game world. And it does a, long, a, a really nice introduction of like, oh, these are my systems uh, in a very um, intuitive way as well. So that's a good one too. Mm-hmm. The first, the land's good. The first, the land is good. Yeah, nobody. Good yeah. Yeah, I don't I, think I, anyone ever just. So good. Good. I agree. I it's been, a good introduction. Who? What's Cosmo? Remember Cosmo? Cosmo Yaps? What's his? The that's, game. Yeah. That's, that's a good one too. Me is he, the he's another guy from Royal Road. Yep. Yeah, he was. Good. I love yeah, it. Speed, Speedrunner was a good intro book too. Yeah, the game is I actually book two was so different. A nine. Who was Speedrunner? What's his name? Uh, good night, Ray. Um, I can't remember. Avril, Avril, Avril's going. Oh, Avril's uh, going. Good night, Avril. Avril, 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 before you go, I just need to know, is it Avril or is it Avril? I don't know if she's still here, but you know. Might have just left. Oh, she said. I'm D and D. Avril, is it is. is <laughs> Oh wait, she's still. I don't know if she's still there. She just typed by everyone. We'll okay. see. So I want to play D and D. Oh wait, wait, wait. She says second option. Do you remember what she said? Second. Okay, it's, it's Avril. Okay, like Levine. Okay. Yeah. Yes. No, not like Levine at all. Oh. <laughs> she's nothing like a Levine. I never watched your uh, the, the gaming ones you did with Charles. How would those go? To whom do you speak, me? Yeah. Um, You're the. Yeah. I don't think we ever did any gaming ones, but to answer your question for Speedrunner, is that the Tower of Babel you refer to? Tower yeah. of Babel Speedrunner? That's the first book was good. Yeah, Adam Elliott. Um, Wait, didn't, didn't you and Charles and Blaze do like a gaming session? Yes, he, they started it. 
Oh, you mean the uh, D and D thing? Like yeah, the- yeah. Tabletop gaming. Yeah, yeah. We did like three episodes and then it kind of fell apart because people's schedules changed in and our DM changed a couple times and that not really great for continuous storytelling. Um, mm-hmm. But it was fun. I, that was like the first time I ever got to play um, like any kind of D&D system. Which reminds out- me. Which reminds um, me. Uh, D&D we used, what was the other one called? Um, the Fate System because Blaze Corbin was running it and he, oh, liked okay. it and he was DMing it and I think the other guys weren't taking it as seriously as they should have. Um, yeah, right. Then we switched over to D and D when Charles Dean took over oh, oh, as the DM. Oh, oh, oh. Like, oh, nobody you played D and D. You expected the crew to turn into full murder hobos. Like, how can you not expect that? <laughs> like, we're going to take it off the rails. Like, I remember one part. Jeff was like riding a motorcycle away from everybody into the darkness. Yeah, it's just like, it's just like, what are you doing? It's like I'm just going over here. Then like something happened and he didn't get part get to be part of that and then comes back and it's just like and oh. and apparently we all never co- collaborated with what our builds were going to be so we had a bunch of people who weren't nobody was like a a fighter build <laughs> you had a, you had you had a bard you had me as a mechanic detective um, Jeff was like a stunt writer so he could fight but he could only fight with his BMX bikes and so he could like get our first charge in it and get away in fast but that was it he had no hit points. Um, and like, uh, who was it? Charles, I think. Pirate. It was like a power, Dakota was a power man, sorry, I think of some kind. Uh, but he had like really crappy powers and he, he was a, he was secretly like a, a fire starter. Um, like he, he, he loved to fight stars, but he's also a firefighter. So it was a nice <laughs> there. But nobody was a fighter. Like, so nobody could stand up there and take punches. Uh, and so it was a really unbalanced team. I was like, oh, I didn't realize this. Yeah. So actually, I'm, I'm going to be running a D&D session this coming Thursday. Uh, see if I, it's an experiment, but on the, uh, the Dungeon uh, Facebook group, I'm getting three volunteers, and I'm throwing them into the Slime Dungeon. And I'd like to start a weekly rotation of dungeons of, from different stories as D&D locations. That's cool. That's a lot of work, man. It is. I have a lot of free time now, so he's like, I don't have school anymore. I can do all kinds of things. Well, I have to work and write. Right, but, bro. Yeah. We need to be writing almost that free time. Yeah, but that, you know, that that money. You're, you're still young. You got to get your money at first. Focus on career, man. Get get the writing done. I've got, I published a book last Friday, so at least I give me a week. I feel like talking should be on. You got more books than me too. I'm like. I'm in my 40s for putting out my first book, so you got me beat. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, okay. This is going to alienate Jeffrey a little bit, but Ramon and um, Taj will appreciate this question. But, like, how – I guess not mad isn't the right word, but, like, how angry or emotionally responsive or angry does it make you, like, everybody's like, you should, you can't write. You shouldn't write your whole life. You couldn't do that. You should do this. You should do that. Now you're 40, you're 30, whatever. And you're like, I just did my first book. I could have done this 20 years ago. What the hell? You know what? That's definitely, I think, a loaded question, but I think it's a fair question. Um, so, Taj, you want to answer that first? My it's- biggest regret in life is that I gave way too many fucks about a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have. You know, like, like if I could go back knowing what I know now, I'd be walking around with, like, like old, like if I could just beam back into my 16-year-old body and people come up, Hey, buddy, what's going on? That's what's going on. I'm done with you. I got other things to do. <laughs> okay. I realized right. that all, like literally all my friends who were like, like mean and didn't really care and didn't give any, any fucks. They like, look at the roots. I used to rhyme with them. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, well, Jimmy Kimmel chilling now. I'm like, yeah, I probably should have given a lot less. And it's still hard for me because I'm such a nice guy. I'm like, oh, I'm a nice guy. Just step on me like a doormat. So, you know. Well, I don't, I'm going to say that the being nice is not the same as necessarily being. I mean, I understand where you're connecting them. Um, I don't agree that. No, it, I, yeah. I, I, was, I was doormatting. Yeah, I know. I, that, that's what yeah. I think you meant. But that, yeah. that's, a, that's a whole different yeah. thing. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I hear what you're saying. Like, I, I wasn't reading signs that were there. There were signs there. That I should have definitely hit the brakes and turned. Mm-hmm. Instead of flying off the cliff, right? Okay, that that that's a fair statement. You wish you could go back and just give fewer 
Fs about what people think. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, like, when yeah. I'm in the air, I can't curse when I'm on the air. It's really weird for me because I feel like I'm in charge. I need to be the responsible adult in the room. Uh, so it's it's a thing for me. I don't know. I can do it in real life in my novels, but not on, on the air, apparently. Oh, come uh, on. Try one. Try it. Just try it once. Just let one out. No, sorry. Um, but for me, in response to Gable's direct question, um, I wasn't one of those people people told you couldn't write or you couldn't do this thing because nobody, I didn't do it. Remember, I, I didn't start writing until I was already in my 30s. Um, mm-hmm. So I was like, just a couple of years ago, like literally <laughs> I'm, I'm in, in lunch breaks and before and after my two full-time jobs, just typing away the computer because I love little RPG so much. I was already doing the podcast. Um, and I decided, you know what? I can probably write something better than what I'm reading sometimes. And so I, you know, over the course of the next year, it's just like every day, a couple thousand words. And it's just like a thing that I was putting together and, and typing on a regular basis. And I have my wife like read every night, like every foot massage. So she was my editor. And there's always, I, it never made sense to me in my brain. Like, why wouldn't I publish this? Even though I had no writing experience, I had no creative writing experience whatsoever. It was literally the first thing that I had done creatively. It never made sense to me because I had already talked to a bunch of literary authors who published, and they told me, "Oh, this is like a really easy system. You hit, you hit, you hit upload on Amazon. You put up some cover art, uh, and you you hit publish, and you set prices. And that's all there really is to it. So there's no gatekeeper. So it, it, it never crossed my mind like not to do a thing in my ignorance, and that people. I figured like, oh, my wife will read it, my mom will read it, and even if that's it." I still had a really good time writing this story world um, with characters that I love, and I and I gave it a shot, even if it wasn't successful. Uh, so I, I, but I can I can absolutely answer the question in the perspective of like being willing to do the thing that you love or enjoy despite criticism or or, or fears of failure. For me, that was definitely the podcast, mm. um, because for me in my, in my life, and this is this is just me personally. When I started doing the podcast, where it is the the Geek Bites podcast, I also had a super bad point in my life. Not not like like relationship wise, my life was actually pretty decent. Paid my bills, had a good wife, but like just I'm, I suffered from depression my entire life. And there was always those moments where you're feeling the crash, and you know the bad thoughts are coming, and like those those dark periods. And I could feel my, that hitting me, even though I was I, I was having a really good life. Um, and I could you could I could I've been through it enough where I could tell it was coming. I it just was feeling like I didn't have a community and, and finding little bridge kind of helped me out with that. And I, I was finding a bunch of people. Um, and, right. and it was, I was listening to a podcast by Kevin Smith, um, who does a, a number of amazing podcasts. And he was telling me the story about his friend. Um, um, I forget his name now, but they do the tell him Steve Dave podcast. And he was like, right. my friend um, was like almost to the point of suicide. And I told him do a podcast. It'll, it'll feel, make you feel like you have a voice. And if people listen to it, it'll make you like you have a community. And I took that to heart and I started the Geek Bites podcast with my friend. And it was just the two of us chatting. Um, and then eventually spun off into the Little Bridge podcast. I was getting to there. And it was really there that I found you guys. I found you guys who I'm talking to, the community that I'm a part of now. And that kind of gave me a place. But there was still that fear of like, oh, what if nobody listens to this? What if what if I'm just talking into the wind my entire life and and, and my voice isn't really that important? And so I can kind of relate to what you're saying in that respect. I remember when you did go ahead, Jeff. Oh, well. I still hear that people keep telling me to, to get a real job. I've only been writing <laughs> for years. I'm 24 and, you know, I was also in a bad place before writing. Gave me those past accomplishments, you know, to support your uh, today confidence. Mm-hmm. Uh, today, <laughs> a relative came up three times and said, look, I found jobs in your area. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, his phone and said, "Look, I entered jobs in the local area." I'm like, and you're like, "Here's my Amazon page. Look, I have a job. I've I've multiple books out." Yeah. So you know, and it, it's weird for me because I'm technically one of the first guys to get in this genre. At the same time, I'm usually the youngest guy in any group. So in that sense, it's weird because my life is so much lower than everybody else's. You're you're actually at the right age, the exact age I was thinking of when I posed that question, because like you just graduated college, maybe a little bit older, like a year or two older, but like that's around the age where they're like, you got to pick this job to do this thing, you know, you can't be an artist or you can't be a blah blah. And that wasn't my, I mean, my personal experience is what I w- I'm speaking of, like when I was you know a little bit younger than you. Well, actually about your age, because I started college later, 
because I was in the military. So I started a little later. So they're like, yeah, you can't go. I was going to go to go be a game designer and then like a, a writer. And they're like, nope, go do this other stuff. So like you, you already ahead of the game, man. You're 24. You published five, six books already, man. You already got the ball rolling. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Like, yeah. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. There's definitely people in the world too, who've been inspiring writers their entire 50 year life and they never put the publish button out. And so you're, you're ahead on that respect. Yeah. yeah. Which I'd like to point out, you know, the number of, of you authors out there who have served in the military, like, dear Lord, we have a lot of military guys as authors. You know, okay. This is, you know, they have, you know, the, discipline. They have the discipline. No, this is why, <laughs> because you get to play with guns, no matter what branch you're in, you get to play with guns and cool shit. And then you have for about, for about five minutes of the day, you get to play with guns or cool shit. And then for the other, like 24 hours, you sit there and do fucking nothing. And so you're sitting there and you're just making shit up in your head for hours at a time because you have nothing to do but sit there. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, let's make a story up while I sit here and stare at the water for five hours. They call it, they call it grunt work for a reason. <laughs> uh, some folks in the audience who are agreeing. We have a uh, Uribe says United States Air Force. So <laughs> Lots of authors like I think Dakota Crowder's in the military. Um, um, yeah, Blaze was in the military. Blaze, in the military. Uh, also, as well, Michael Chatfield, um, yep. all in the military, guys. So, yeah, lots of folks. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I have a personal bone to pick with Michael Chatfield right now over 10 week curse. Oh, I thought you were gonna say it was like your tibia or something. Never mind, go on. No, no, no. So, basically, I um, started reading 10 week curse. And I'm really upset that I read all three books and book four wasn't there. Michael oh. Chatfield, if you hear this video, I'm upset with you. He's not ready yet. Well, he has Wait. other novels. I mean, he has other series he's putting out. He writes like vacation. Have you seen? Yeah. No, of- Michael Chatfield is a beast. I, I can't. I can't knock him. I'm. I'm joking. I'm totally. Even on vacation, that guy writes like at Dragon Con every year when we see him. He he was always like, "No, I gotta go write something." He has like a little portable computer. He pulls up yeah. Yeah, like little. Mm-hmm. He was like in between, uh, like type type just, just knocking things out. Even on vacation, like he's traveling around the world um, because Again. it's cheaper than like the rent in in Canada, apparently. Uh, and so he everywhere he's going, he finds a place and he dedicates like most of the week to writing. And then he goes off and has has a good time. So he's he's definitely a dedicated writer. He writes faster than I do. So mm-hmm. he writes he writes faster than everyone. Yeah. It's insane. And I was like, I want to be like Michael Chapman. I'm gonna write ten thousand words a day and put out freaking a book a month. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Those days, I'm sitting there and I'm getting email updates from my Michael Chatfield Patreon. He's like, new chapter up, new chapter up. You get like three or four of them in a day, and you're like, yeah. My Patreon is like new chapter up once a week. Yeah, if I'm lucky, yeah. I'm doing yeah. once a month, man. But I'm releasing really big chapters. Yep. <laughs> Uh, we got a couple comments from the chat room there. Let's see. Uh, let's see where they are. Goodbye, Ray. Yeah, I and think Eric yeah. Ron says bathroom yeah. night. Uh, Eric Ron says bathroom night. It was what inspired me to become a writer. I was super lucky to become friends with the author Charles Rocks. Yeah, Charles did actually talk uh, very highly of Eric Ron, so I, I can mm-hmm. I can confirm that. Um, let's see. Oh, and with a question from Hi, Charles. You were Bruce actually asked, um, "What book made you realize you can do something better?" Yeah. On that note, I'm going to say goodnight to you guys. See you yeah. Real pleasure to meet both of you. Hey. Yeah, man, you yeah. too. I'm and going to go buy Slime Dungeon tonight, too. I don't know when I'll get to it, but I'll read it soon, within the month of February. It's also, it's also audiobooks, I believe, for the Dungeon uh, yeah. Dungeon Chronicles, so you can listen to it, too. Getting a new uh, narrator for this new one, since it's a new series. But well, sort of a new series, but okay. It is a new series. It's okay, done. Sure. Anyway, see you guys. I right, take care. See you. Okay, so you guys that are left, we have uh, Gabriel. Um, what book made you realize you can do something better, or like what were you inspired by to write? We, like we can better, take it that way. Better, too. better is the wrong word. You know what I mean? Like like by saying like oh I can do this better than that person, I think is the wrong word. Yeah. The fact that there's a there's a few books like pretty much all the lit RPG books I read. At first, I'm like, oh, I can do this, too. Like, not like, oh, I can do it better than this guy, but like, oh, I can write this. This is fine. I can do this. Why am I not doing it? These stories aren't like, like, this isn't a knock on anybody, but none of us are fucking uh, Tolstoy, you know? None of us are amazing writers. And like, 
I read, you know, yourself, book, or I read Taj's book or I read your book. I'm like, I enjoy the story. It's a fun story. So there's no like, it's like they read the land. They're like, oh, it's a great, it's a fun book. It's not amazing, but like, it's not like a literary masterpiece, but it's fun. So like, why, why not write a fun book? And so that's my shit. I just write fun books. So the land, uh, uh, bathrobe night, um, uh, Delvers, uh, Alter World, War, uh, uh, Shaman, War, Way of the Shaman. Mm-hmm. What's uh, the Australian dude? Uh, Zachariah, the Frag series. No, a- end online. Is it end? Yeah. 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 Those were That's like the first, the first ones I read, and I was like, man, these are so much fun. Why don't I write one too? You're, I think, uh, yeah. 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 Perfect. That's a great answer. Thank you. Um, Tosh? For me, for me, I started off reading Caverns and Creatures. And I sat so, there. Oh, like, Robert Bevan. Robert Bevan. Robert Bevan. Yeah. yeah, Robert Bevan. Man, I, I was sitting there, like, literally crapping my pants laughing so hard. It was, it was well, not literally or figuratively, but, you know. Just, Look, you were just imitating and, art. Yeah, you know, pretty much. Because Cooper was great. Um, so reading that and then i think i moved on to i definitely read the land and then i read uh play to live oh man d russ man i love that series the world you know and so it was just like i started getting into that and it was just like had this idea where you know it's like i called my daughter and was talking to her about how the books go and video games with my son because he was really into video games i started talking to them and throwing the idea around about having her be a character in a game about with cartoon violence, and, you know, and that turned into Ruins of Majestic. So there we are. So pretty much, I started reading. So the time from I transitioned from reading to writing was about three months, and That's I crazy. literally read like maybe fifty books before. I was just like I'm just reading and reading and reading because I was living in a uh, California. And I was on workman's comp. And so I didn't have anything to do. And Kindle Unlimited was my friend. Oh, my God. It was just like, oh, yes, yeah, just keep reading. On oh, my Kindle, just Kindle. I love you, Kindle. <laughs> like, I got a back injury, so I'm literally laying there. And it's just like, oh, need more words. And it was just Dude, great. It was a great time. You remember how hard it was to find books, to find more? I'm like, where's the next one? I need another book. I need another book. Where is that? And then after I read The Land, I actually found the Lit RPG group. And that's when I started to be like, oh, there's a community. It's great. You know, and then, you know, I found other groups and other people. And instead of hanging out with them, and it's like, oh, look, I have friends now. Because I don't go out. I'm like, I'm literally at the point in my life where it's like dating. Eh, that can wait. I have four children. So I'm, I'm like, eh, I, I can be by myself for a while. I can do that. You're worth waiting for. That's right. Yeah, so I've been busy. You yeah, have been getting busy. Uh, for me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, I think I've already talked about like how I was inspired, but um, I, it was never really like, oh, necessarily, oh, this is a crap author and I can do better than this. I, I mean, to a degree, it was because sometimes some of the things that come out of like amateur writing is not always spectacular, and that's okay. I think what one of the things I like about our genre the most is that we'll accept like subpar um like technical writing stuff if it's a really fun story if it's a good if it's mm-hmm. just a good time um you know uh, it, it it's it's really okay like other writers who come from other communities they're like they read our stuff and they're like wow i can do so much better than this but then they'll write like a really technically proficient story but they don't get the genre like the, the things in the genre necessarily and so even though it's like a technically proficient writing like they don't they don't understand the community they don't understand gaming they don't understand like the, our, our nerd culture whatever the case is and so then they don't do as well uh, but but as long as it's a fun story like we'll accept like some really sub right like some of my most fun stories that i've ever read have been like oh these are translations uh from another language and they and, and they're missing vowels and their tenses are wrong but it's still super fun and i love these things exactly uh, the russians love, love the russians for that yeah, some of the things, and 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 so it, for me, it was never this sucks. It was always like I'm inspired. If this is the bar that's set in our community, I can do that. You know, that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, this is the bar of like ticket like, I can give it a shot. I can probably, I can probably write at least as good as this. Um, I can do it. 
you know, this is we have we really do have like a low bar for so like entry of like successful stories, um, and that's okay. Like I said, I, I consider myself a pulp fiction writer. I, I know I'm not Shakespeare. I have reasonable expectations for what I can produce, and I hire editors to make that better, and they really do a good, a good job of that. Um, for me, it's always like I love the stories and I loved our community so much. I wanted to contribute more than like I wanted to do better than somebody else necessarily. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I like to think of all of us, like really, like we're all writers, we're all authors, but I think of us more as like storytellers because mm -hmm. we really tell stories in a new way because we have stats and statistics. And that's kind of my thing with my books. I try to like incorporate things to help with the story, you know, that are different. Obviously they work, sometimes they don't, you know, some people may not like soundtracks, some people may not like wiki links in the fucking book. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I like the wiki links. I said, I like the wiki links, man. I love, I thought, about you, <laughs> I'm just saying. I mentioned WikiLeaks, like his his last novel, The Gamer Two. He actually had a bunch of WikiLeaks saying, "Like, oh no, this is real historical information." And I'm like, you, "You're kind of you're linking the WikiLeaks, you know, to, to Wikipedia, so that's a little iffy in the first place." But yeah, those are actual historical facts he's using because, you know, history is written by the <laughs> successful people, and so I understand where he's coming from. To me, it, it was definitely funny. It's funny because uh, I think we we skip, we we stopped the, uh, asking the question when you were like what reviewing what do reviewers do that you hate the most yeah. and like oh i just hate like people that are like i know what history is and i know this for a fact and you're stupid like it's like half my bad reviews are like oh do you not know that this isn't like that and i'm like did you not know there's not really gods that send people back in time i'm like it's a fucking fantasy novel are people yeah. like do you not know that you know the draw on a bow is 100 pounds i'm like Dude, did, did did you grow up in Mongol and in, in the Mongol in Mongol in 1200 AD? No, like come on, like like, yeah, like, like I, I can tell you definitely did a lot of research for these things. I'm like, oh no, this this yeah, I'm like I, that's why you provided it just for the we do we were like, no, here's my sources. I'm citing things for you guys so you can know. I also mm -hmm. probably you didn't link like the People's History of the United States or something in there. It's not like people don't see that word fiction. It's like, did you not see the word fiction? Yeah, I can make stuff up. I can't, I can't, uh, it's too, it's too, it's too fake for me. I can, I can believe that the Native American gods are real and you got sent back in time and have like a super awesome leather pouch, but no, not this thing. It's just, people are funny what they can. <laughs> their level of like, like what breaks their level of like uh, disbelief in. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't, my brain, too many directions at once. <laughs> <laughs> the pie chart doesn't fit. <laughs> The slice doesn't fit in. Perfect. Uh, we have another question from the audience. Um, M.A. Carlson asks, what book had your favorite game system, not necessarily your favorite book? Oh. So what, 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 what has your favorite game system? So I, I already typed in there that uh, I love the Apocalypse Gate game system for okay. redeeming the DXP. I'm like, ooh, uh, do like. This... This is okay. I think that Scotty Fudge, Fudge Fudge, whatever, his turn based, yep. his turn based system. He wrote, he like, I, I, read it. I was like, you did it. I was like, you did it. I was like, how is he gonna incorporate turn based battle? I'm like, okay. I think that's just the most fun. Like, it's it, it, the leveling and stuff is cool. I, you know, it's pretty. He, it's it's pretty similar to his other books, the leveling stuff, but the like the turn based combat. I don't know if that's the same question. But like no, that's, that's like yeah. that's like the coolest. Like I think that's the coolest system I've yeah, seen that, in and and accomplished. Right. That was great. I love that one. That was amazing. It was attacked and the tactics. zombie. Yeah, yeah Earth tactics. Yeah, <laughs> the zombie's just like just that freezing. Earth tactics. Like, I I think my only my biggest problem with him, like I like a lot of his books. I like most of his books, but then like he goes too into the sex direction for me. I'm like I need more story. I need more story, and we're getting it's too much. It definitely you know, depends on the series. Like, uh, yeah. uh, a couple of the series are specifically sexual, like the Galactic series, I think it is. Um, but he, it, he he definitely keeps the sex to the particular series. Um, there are two books from Scotty Future that is turn-based tactics, um, Earth Tactic Advanced, which I was always the second book, and also yeah. Tactical Fantasia. Uh, both those do do turn-based. Yeah, yeah he's, also, he's, a good, like, well, I think he's a good author. I think he's really original. I think he does really good stuff. Even, even with all the sex stuff, like the Fletcherverse uh, is, is amazing. Like the way that his characters bounce around in different books. Yeah. Scottyverse 
dirty. Like, if, yeah. if you know, like, if, if you don't know who Fat Scott is, <laughs> you gotta know who Fat Scott is. If you don't know who Fat Scott is or his song, you need to keep reading more Scotty Fudge. <laughs> like, I think Scotty's great. I think he's one of the. He doesn't get enough credit. I, I guess that's not true. I mean, I think he gets. He's plenty of credit. He's good. He's good. I like him a lot. I don't think he gets the sales he should. Um, I'll say he's, that. He's not, he's not limited, is he? What was that? He's not in KU, is he? Um, I don't know. I don't see. I think he's not in KU. If he was in KU, I th- well, maybe he is. I don't know. Let's check it out. We, we have we have the internet. Uh, we have Amazon, so it's like it's Are not going to be now? Is your shit all worked out? Uh, to whom do you speak? Yeah, uh, you. Ramon, is your stuff pretty much worked out? Did you get your Amazon stuff worked out and back in KU and stuff? Uh, yeah, everything's back in KU, and that was just a decision. Um, because for, for people who don't know, basically about uh, six months ago, uh, Amazon started sending out letters um, essentially threatening authors who were in the KU program, um, saying that, oh, we have... Um, suspicious page reads for your KU. And if this continues, we're going to ban you basically. And that's what they said. And they actually did to several authors um, who a couple of which who I never recover, like um, Michael Scott Earl, that's kind of what happened basically. But there was a whole like slew of authors who got these letters and got really freaked out because um, if Amazon bans you, it means you can't write anything. You can't upload anything on a different account, different bank account. Um, you're just you're, you're banned permanently, basically. Yeah. And so rather than take the risk uh, of losing my entire account, uh, which was a good source of income for me, uh, 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 I quit my job at that point. And I decided to drop out of KU and just like have the books for purchase. And within the last um, two months, beginning of this year, basically, I decided to go back on KU because I've been talking to other authors, basically going, why it didn't work for me? Like I... I I basically made about seventy percent ish of what I did with KU, basically. Um, That's so direct seventy percent. So direct sales weren't horrible, uh, but it was a lot less. It was it was a significant portion of of lost income that I had from KU, basically, without having KU. Um, and so about two months ago, basically, I, I just I talked to other authors like, yeah, those letters still go out, but they're less threatening. They're like, we suspect suspicious paid which for me. We're just not going to pay you for them. Um, mm-hmm. And we're not going to to cancel your account, um, and so that's been Amazon's shift in perspective of like, oh, they're not 100 percent sure of like who's really doing this and whether it's for like bad purposes or authors on authors like trying to sabotage each other or something because that that a couple of articles had come out about people doing that basically, right. and so. Th- Two weeks into like being cute, I got a few letters saying, "Oh, suspicious page reads. We're just not going to pay you for whatever we think is, is fake or false." Um, and so, some authors in KU just aren't getting paid the mm-hmm. the things they should be, but at least they're not getting kicked out or banned yeah. from the program. And so, it's one of those like, "Oh, Amazon isn't uh, isn't being um, transparent about oh what they're considering suspicious page reads versus oh really fast readers." Um, right. The things like Michael Scott Earl said about his situation was that Amazon eventually told them, and he this is a public post from him, so it's not like it's a secret. They basically told him, your readers are reading faster than we think is humanly possible, so we think you're cheating the system. Wow. Um, and that's that was their reasoning for banning him from Amazon entirely, basically. And and they don't the guy, know <laughs> the guy writes amazingly fast, but at the same point, right. his readers there's a lot of readers in our community who read really fast. Like they, really they'll read really it fast. Fast. they can click that button. Uh, and, and to Amazon algorithm, that is apparently super suspicious. And I, I literally know people who told me time and time again, like I read three or four books a day. So like I, yeah. I get that Amazon thinks that that's suspicious, but it's not, it's, it's, it's more common in our community, especially with KU that you have really fast and voracious readers. Besides. Yeah. Besides, uh, Besides uh, Chatfield, who's successful wide? I'm trying to think who's wide besides Chatfield. Chatfield actually did a really good job going wide. Um, yeah. And but he place. also puts a lot of extra work into advertising and things like that in, in those and, systems. I, I and he imagine. also works in a bunch, of, a couple of different genres as well. Yeah. So I, 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 my wide experience was probably different than other people. I just put things up places, and there's not the same community. Um, to like Apple or to, you know, Barnes and Nobles or to, you know, a lot of people just use draft or drive uh, to do all of them at once and including international ones in smaller public companies. And for me, you came down to math being that Amazon controls something like, uh, depends on what server you're in, information, but somewhere between 60 to 75% of the ebook market. Yeah. Uh, and so if, if, if that's not your primary, that's 
most people's primary source of income for for being a successful publisher. It's not the only way to do. It. Obviously, there are a bunch of people on like twenty bucks to fifty k, um, or like other other writing groups where they say, "Oh, their wide programs and their wide distribution works really well for them." It's just it didn't work for me, and I, I my math said, "Oh, I'm losing thirty percent of my income um, by not uh, being on you." And so I went back and answering your question previously about Scotty Hooch, he has one book on Kindle Limited. Um, that's the Realm Strider, which is the his most recent release, which is the uh, uh, trading card game mechanics. Yes. Oh. He has that one, um, so, but so everything else is not. But anything else because he also put this stuff on Royal Road Did and other places. Yeah, I read it. Is it good? It, yeah, um, I enjoyed it. it I liked it. I I liked it, but I also recognize that it's a. Uh, that's probably his weakest game system and all the stuff that he's written. Like, and that's, that's, that's kind of a default to like any mm-hmm. trading card game system. Like I, I always <laughs> admire Cody Fuchs for being willing to experiment with his game mechanics. So he's, I right. he has my total admiration. He's like one of the, he's the first and one of the only authors who's ever done turn-based mechanics. Um, and he's the only author I know of who's done trading card game mechanics uh, in like making it part of the story. And he, it just by the end of the story for me, the trading card mechanics kind of disappeared, and it became a little more like um, or tactic advanced in that it was like zombies coming wave after wave, constant fighting. But the trading card game mechanics he established earlier just kind of disappeared to some degree or another. And so for me, it's like, oh, I get that it's harder to keep that that going. And he had some great ideas. It's just that the execution of them over the course of the entire novel didn't quite work out well for me. Uh, but it's so I give it a six, seven out of ten, so because I had a good time with the story. But that's more. I'm also a fan. And the more and the more you know about Fletch's writing, the more you, that you know. Yeah, there's definitely like a tons of cameos in that novel too, from like all oh, other yeah. series. The trading cards right. he uses are like are cameos from other novels. So did you see how Ramon went to interview or to reviewer voice? He goes and he just jumps into the mode. Da, 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 da. <laughs> well, you act like reviewer is a mode for him. That is Ramon. That's, that's most of my life. I mean, honest, I, I spend 40, 50 hours a week reading and reviewing and, I, you know, well, a lot less time writing. So there you go. Um, let's see. But my, my favorite mechanics um, in a story, to go back and answer Emmy Carlson's question, is uh, Universe Online. I mean, except for the ones I read, obviously, but Universe Online by Ryan Beacon Henning. Um, I think oh. that first game, Enter the Game, was probably my favorite game mechanic system just because it, it was so flexible. Um, it's a game mechanic system where you eventually have a bunch of like blocks that you can kind of purchase and add in as like you level and how you, how you essentially stack the blocks determines like your, your skill system. And so it was, it was a very interesting complex system uh, that he described in there. And it was, it was absolutely amazing. His story is kind of the one that inspired me to write my own like survival space story. Um, so I, re- I, I that's definitely has a great place in my heart as far as like a, a really nice game mechanic system. Um, after the first book, it's, it became less survival in space game mechanic stuff, uh, but it still did a really good story. Just I haven't heard from I haven't I actually did not interview um, with, with Ryan Beginning before, and just he disappeared off the map. I don't know what happened to him. Was that the book where uh, he gets Samus as a partner from no, Metroid? That, that's um, I think that's Scotty Fuchs's book you're talking about. So oh, you um, know that yeah, that's, you know, that's that's yeah. that's. That's Scotty. Yeah. So it's had to get- well, we don't we don't call her Seamus. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a different game. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah uh, <laughs> Universal Line is definitely one of like the ones that I like because of the game mechanics, specifically because it is it, it's not necessarily like levels and stuff. It's it's a very good like block skill system. I thought I was like, oh, that's really that's really pretty cool. See, now I gotta like tag that one in my. Uh... Kindle library, like Universe Online. Hmm. Yeah. So this is why I do the podcast and the reviews because, like, I have so many stories that I love. I actually did um, <laughs> a survey of my own novels recently, and out of like the some like eight or nine hundred novels that I've read and reviewed over the last three years, like only thirty percent of them are like have a negative ish review of like maybe five and less, five out of ten and less, thirty percent, and that includes a bunch of you know four stars and two stars and, one, and a couple one stars for plagiarism. Um, most of them have been like seven and above. So I okay. love like 70% of the stuff I read basically. So I, I have not been able to catch your, uh, your podcast in the last couple of weeks. So I like, what did you, what did you give Dave? Dave Walmart? Yeah. Oh, I gave him my eight out of 10. Eight out of 10 for uh, 
uh, Scream Chronicles. That just came up in the last podcast. So, you know, yeah. you're not too far from that. You can still catch it. Uh, but it was an 8 out of 10, mostly because his story had some really good, solid resolutions. Um, and his game mechanics storyline, that the in game storyline was really clear. It had had a point. It had base, and this is my only spoiler for folks who haven't read it, but it, it, it does base mechanics. It does the, the, the baseball day hit, uh, the series is known for, but at the same time, it also flips the script and goes after the bad guys. And that's part mm-hmm. of the resolution in the story. Uh, but for me, the thing pushed beyond a seven was basically that he had really firm resolutions for all the major plot points. Um, and I mean, like, like once you're not going like, oh yeah, that, that guy's not coming back kind of stuff. And, and so it's like, I was really super happy that he, he took the time to like go back and, and just clear everything out. Um, even if some of them aren't like super, like, I know people are going to complain about some of that ending for the rural storyline. Uh, but it was, it was definitely a solid resolution. So I'm like, oh yeah, that, that, that took it a step up for me. So universe online rise of Rex part one, uh, not rise of Rex. It's actually called enter the game. Rise of Rex is actually the second part of that series. It actually went with um, Universe Online, Enter the Game Part 1, and then Enter the Game Part 2, then Rise of Rex Part 1, Rise of Rex Part 2. That's how that series goes. And, but he actually he compiled them together into just Universe Online, Enter the Game Complete Edition, which is one and two together. But like that first part, Enter the Game Part 1, is, is, is my favorite in that series. Okay. Didn't he use pretty similar covers for all of them? They're the exact same covers. He does that for all of his stuff. Confusing. I was like, oh, he's got a new book. Does he have a new book? I don't know. He has a new book. Nope. And and that's mostly like, oh, the the jinkiness of like the indie community. That's also, like, uh, yeah. like World Tree Online. Uh, World, World Seed. World, World Seed. Like World I love Seed, those yeah. books. You but know? they use the same cover. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. So I have. Been... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I wasn't saying anything. No, I was going to change topics. Go ahead. Oh, for free. So I so I don't know if you have this problem. I mean, Ramon obviously I guess doesn't, but like I'll start a new book. I'll be reading a book and then I'll start thinking of my, a book that I'm writing, and then I'll be like, "Whoa, I'm I don't forgot what I was reading the last few pages." Does that happen to you guys? Like I I got this. It's so hard to finish a book now. I don't know. No, you know, recently like I've actually been doing a lot of reading, and I'm kind of happy because it it. It helped me to relax back to the point where I was when I first started Majesta. So it's like, oh, I'm reading these books. Oh, the pressure's off. All right, now I can come back and attack Majesta like with with fresh ideas and just be like, okay, what are we doing? Where are we going? You know, as opposed to just being in, stuck in my own head. So, like, oh my God, like the Barrow King. I was reading the Barrow King. <laughs> God. So yeah, it's like I just. Hmm. Is that not good? I don't know. It was good. Sam Carney. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. it the story was kind of weird because the first book was for the main character. Then the second book was uh, okay, like okay. about his sidekick, right? But the sidekick story was damn good. I got to say it was damn good as well. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good standalone know. novel, but I'm like, I don't know if you should call that book two as much as like side book one. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely be labeled as a side book one and then you know like he's just got he's got like two books and two side quests already but i'm enjoying them and they're great you know i got to read michael chatfield's new series so that was great i don't even know what else did i read hold on a second let's what's on your kindle guys what's on your most recent list? list yeah um well, you, we know what you've been reading ramon well we had <laughs> I've been so I was gonna do a harem, so I got into harem for a minute. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, you know what's really fun that I like a lot? If you haven't read him, the Hondo Jinx man, he's a fun, he's a fun harem writer. If you haven't read any of his books, he does like this Conan the or this Dan the Barbarian series. Yes, yeah, then, I, I absolutely agree. That's a good um, game of the Liberty series. Um, Dan the Barbarian, I think, has one two. No, uh, book four came out on December the 4th or December 25th. I just picked that up. I haven't read it yet. That I haven't read yet. I want to read it. And then uh, Daniel Black's new book I haven't read yet. Uh, I think I read that one. That's like when I start pounding books, man, it's like, it's like, oh my God, that was a beer I drank and I don't even remember it. Like I just start pounding through them. Like I'm like right now I'm reading uh what's called the dark alchemy, the dark herbalist. Oh, is that good? I, like I know Ramon. I know Ramon would read it, but. I, you know, so far I'm enjoying it, but it's also a bit over the all over the place. You know it's what I mean? Right? Huh? Translation? 
yeah. Russian translation? Well, some of it is translation. Some of it is basically that the story is just like by nature all over the place. It's like the way that everything has been going. Like, yeah, the whole story is very slice of life in that you're just following a guy doing some stuff sometimes. Yeah, but he's also become, you know, like, <laughs> you know, read the first one, see if you like it. The first three books, I, I would definitely recommend. Book four, right now, like, as I'm halfway through it, like I said, it's bouncing around a bit. There's a lot going on. And it's like, but, you know, I could see how, you know, stories get a bit unwieldy as they move forward. If you're book not. Four is the last one, isn't it? That's the, when you're in the, the last one in the series? Yeah, that's uh, what, Finding the Body or something? Yeah, that's the end of the series. He's trying to tie up all those storylines that he created earlier. So he's bouncing yeah. around a little bit, but he's also trying to tie up everything. Um, yeah. So, I get okay, what you're so that, that might explain it. But then I also went and finished up, uh, what is it, Skylar Grant, the, uh, the whole laboratory thing. Oh, yeah. I, had yeah, like, the, I had like four or five of the. Each was a dungeon core. Yeah. Yeah, Eric, how you doing, bro? Huh? I said, see, Eric. Deuces. Oh. Chat room, yeah. Uh, chat room, Eric Brown's Not leaving. Eric. that he said that he uh, the game mechanics he liked in the books for him was threadbare. He liked yeah, the right. good multi class system with individual levels for skills. I thought that was really good too, actually. You know, I was surprised that uh, ah. Siepel, right? Andrew Siepel, is that his name? That bear, I thought he would get a huge, like, huge, just like bump up to like top 100 or something when, when he had that, uh that uh the the what the view was it the yeah. view the view um whoopi goldberg yeah uh, it, it was like the girl's summer's reading list and whoopi goldberg chose yeah. him as one of her like four book choices yeah, um, like for view. And now, but yeah. he didn't get a real huge bump like he, i like we well, also have to remember that, that story had been out for like a year by that time uh from yeah. book one and that's when she was talking about so he still went from like ten thousand to like sub one thousand again so it was relatively yeah. a really good boost, just not as good as it would have been if it was like a fresh release or something. Yeah, yeah, because then people would have read it that were already reading it. It probably would have hit top 100. That's the goal. Is that your – okay, so is that your guys' like – my my next goal is to hit that top 100 mark because I broke the the five and the four. I, that top 100 is my like next marker. I don't, like that my personal one that I'm, that I'm aiming for. Right. What about you guys? Okay, yeah. Tosh? I'm aiming to be top number one writer in the world in the universe. I don't know. Like that's my <laughs> aim. I, I, will I reach it? It's only time will tell, you know, as I wake up in the morning and I drink my espresso and I uh, point my pinky out, I know that I'm destined for great things, but if all you plebes can't understand, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> that is definitely some goals. Uh, for me, I, I understand what you're saying. Like, uh, I always think, and this is more review mode than writing remote, and that I judge a book's success based upon where they are in the uh, in the Amazon rankings. It's not the the subcategories. Right. It's not necessarily the number of reviews you get, although that's part of it for me. It's always like, oh, were you doing the overall Amazon rank? Because that's ultimately going to say, oh, who's yeah. buying your book and how often yeah. are they buying it, et cetera, and, and read through rates and all that. And so for me, top one hundred is always like, oh, that's you're probably. You, in the top 100 authors, if you're getting top 100 stuff, basically, yeah. um, mm -hmm. a moderate success for me is probably going to be um, top one, top 1,000. Anything under there is, is, is a pretty decent success rate, and you're, you can probably pay your bills on that. Um, you know, so yeah. assume your series, everything your series does pretty well. Um, even the, it, the thousand to the 500 though is huge. Yes. Like the difference, like the difference in income from a top one. Like if you're between that 500 and a thousand, but if you're in that 500 to like let's say 100 to 50 that's like double yeah it's like absolutely double. Yeah. there's the yeah. thing i remember from is i was like the first week of your sales like oh if you're if you're in the top 1000 like between like um like five and 1000 you're, you're gonna do pretty decently like you're, you're right. gonna pay your bills um from my perspective like anyways, but yeah like i can go even, to mcdonald's a couple times a month with my uh earnings <laughs> so like yeah <laughs> So yeah. top 100 is always the goal for me as well. But I, I think I have a skewed perspective in that the first book I ever wrote in the universe, um, and authors hate when I say this, uh, Adventures in Terra, hit top 100 um, for being literally the only thing that I've ever written. And I went to an author's conference and like, or, and, 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 and Dragon Con, I told some authors, I like, I hate you. 
that was the most common <laughs> phrase in that story came out. Like, I hate you, Ramon, for you. making top 100 on the first thing you ever wrote in your entire amateur life. I'm like, yeah, sucks. That's awesome, man. I mean, it's it's great that, like, I think when you told me your story the first time and this is the success you have, I think it's, like, one of the best stories I've of somebody in the genre. I mean, you know, you found it later in life. You got success writing your books. Your books are fun. You know, you enjoy the job. I think that's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool that we all get, you get to do this, you know, for a living. Yes. Yeah. And that's definitely a choice it's to make. Amazing. Being like, yeah, that jump was not easy for me. So I had to repeat my success a couple of times before I realized, oh yeah, I could probably, you know, earn my regular income and then some. And like that first book I wrote, I was like, oh, that, that was my yearly paycheck. For yeah. my, my janitorial job, basically, I was like, "Oh no, yeah, I can, if I can repeat this." I'm like, and 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 it's been the case since. Like, I could, I do enough to pay to pay some bills. Yeah, it's just that, yeah, man, that 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 first, like, okay, I'm gonna do this for a living, and then you get that, you're like, uh, I don't know if I can do it. It's pretty. It's a good feeling, man. Yep, and it's definitely a leap to to do full time. Yeah. Like, woo, <laughs> like. like. The first paycheck was like, yeah. Second paycheck was like, yeah. Third paycheck was like, yeah. Fourth paycheck was like, yeah. Yeah, and that's why you have to like yeah. keep producing, like you publish or perish, and that, that's kind of what it comes down to, unfortunately. Like I right. said, if I had known what I was doing, I would have stayed on Royal Road for a bit longer. Yeah, and that's and again, we're all. I mean, I'm, I'm me and Taj at least were like total amateurs to the writing and publishing things, so we didn't know that. Uh, yeah, so and I, one of the other things I, I learned about f- as far as like having an extra stream of revenue was audible like i i knew once my book got good sales i was like oh i'm gonna make an audiobook of this because i love audiobooks like i i i live off audiobooks when i was a janitor and like a substitute teacher mm-hmm. because huge drive time like as a janitor i could just plug in and like work for eight or nine hours and that was my life that's how i got storytelling to me so I always knew I was going to do an audible book, um, even though I didn't know the process or anything. And so when I made it, I'm like, oh, that that increased my income for like by 30% just from like making an audio book. And every year since then, it's been the same thing. I, every yeah. single book I make, uh, you know, you, your first three months are like really good because your first paycheck is good. Next one is 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 slightly less. But then by the yeah. time like the audiobook sales roll around, because it takes another two months for, for your audiobook to get made after you publish and then you know, put on Amazon. Oh, by the time I hit that third or fourth month of ebook sales, oh, then your audiobook paycheck comes in. You're like, oh yeah, that's 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 making up some of that income from from those lacking the sales. And then hopefully by month six, got another book out, or you know, month five or six, whatever, it's another book out. Next cycle again repeats itself, and 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 that I for me was definitely a, trying to get my cycle down to six months. Like two having, books here is like was was where I was aiming. And I'm right now. I'm still in that first year, so I'm looking at one book a year. Hopefully, after the second book comes out, I'll be able to alternate series or whatever to keep it moving. Having multiple revenue streams really helps to balance out that um, those mm-hmm. those pay gaps. It really does go oh, Audible's uh, ebook sales, and then down, 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 down to like mm-hmm. practically nothing or something, or like reasonably nothing. You know, you only have about you a month. Release a new book, and it drives people back to the first one again. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, about do you have about two months? About two months. The first month, you get a good one. It, it, maybe two months of good sales, and then that's about it tapers down to where you need to put something new out. I think Amazon puts you back. Like Amazon takes you out of their their whatever after a couple months anyway. You know, like they, you don't get shown a lot. So I think that that matters. No, absolutely. And those are all very true statements. We have a couple comments in the chat room from people who just joined us. Ian, Hi, Ian. Uh, Ian. Is it Ian or Ian? I'm going to go with Ian. Ian. We, we, no, we, we, we've had this discussion because my actual first name is Ian, so oh. like this is a big one for you. Yeah, me, the other one. Okay. Huh? So, no, 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 no. No, we actually talked about it. Um, I believe it was on Charles's Discord one night. Oh, and it came up that he was an Ian, not an Ian. Oh, so ah. then I, so if it comes from his mouth I and his lips, and you see it, that there. See, look, there you go. Ian. He is Ian. He's basically saying, uh, let's see. He has thirty views this year for him. Uh, we also have Tajel Bradley W says out. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Eric Uglin said he's aiming for seven books this year. So he actually he's a really fast writer too. Like he yeah, sees coming out with a book um, in the Good Guy series. Like I think he came out with, with books one through three last year. Um, and so he said he's planning to try to get seven out this year. So good for him. He's also says he's planning. You should get on those audible things too. Mm-hmm. Eric, I challenge you. I'm doing twelve. Bring it. 
Also, a shout out, Ian, man. Ian, you review all of our stuff. Thanks, man. We appreciate Wait, it. Are you, you talking do. to me or are you talking Thanks. to Ian? Ian. Talking to Ian. Ian. Ian Mitchell, not Ian. If I was going to say Ian, I'd say Taj. Say Ian Taj. <laughs> I, just, I just go Taj. That's what I know. My, I didn't know his real name. I thought Taj was his real name. Taj is my real name. It's just my middle name. That's all my teachers called me that. Mm -hmm. so my dad used to be a teacher at the school. And long story, yeah, but both of them are my names. And uh, Eric also confirms, he's like, uh, Eric Eglin, there's definitely a 30, 60, 90 day drop off in terms of Amazon algorithm support. That is all very true. So, yep, they expect you to keep producing money books so they can keep paying you money. Yep. And the 12 uh, books and the 12 books a year thing, we call that the Michael Scott Earl uh, a policy of writing. Yeah. I'm doing it, man. I'm doing it this year. It's okay, January. Okay. Putting a book out this month, next month. I'm going to do at least, I'm going to try to do at least 10 this year, man. Good for uh, you. I'm nice loving you guys. I'm loving the information. It's almost midnight. I'm about to get off of this thinking computer. Okay. Yeah, let's call it, guys. Let's call it's it. Really, it's kind of late. It's perfectly fine. See, we didn't get to my Star Trek, my Star Wars trivia, but that's fine. Uh, maybe the oh, next just, time. Do it real quick. <laughs> no, no. These are just like weird random facts. We're gonna see, I was going to see who, who knew all these facts, basically. Oh, um, come like, on. Let's do it. We'll do, do one. It. We'll do one. We'll see who, who uh, oh, the two of you who gets it. Um, okay. Um, what is Han Solo's call sign when he's scouting on Hoth? Oh, shit. Hey. Yeah. Maybe the audience knows. I don't know. Mm. What is Han Solo's call sign when he's scouting on Hoth? I have like five or six of these. Man, yeah. I swear yeah. to God, I know that, but I don't. And that's from the good Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> these are all from the good Star Wars, yes. Uh, anybody in the Echo 1? There you go. You are is that incorrect. It? Echo that's 7. Not. Echo seven. Echo seven. Mm. Yeah, exactly. ah. so, yeah. I had a bunch of things like that. So basically, that, that was it, really. Um, no, come so, on, bring it, bring it, bring it. Because yeah, there's no clear winner one, yet. Let me get one right. No clear winner yet. Let's see. Um, what tool does Han ask Chewie for when he's fixing the Millennium Falcon hyperdrive? Hydro spinner. That's it. Taj got it. So Taj won. <laughs> there we go. See. We have a, <laughs> come on, come on. Keep it going. No, let's, let's make it a contest. Uh, what does Yoda eat from Luke Supplies when he lands on Dagobah? One of those protein bar thingies. I can't remember what they yeah, were called though. <laughs> so candy bar. in case you have a candy bar, he says a protein bar. I would accept either granola or an energy bar, but it is an it is an energy bar. So there yeah. you go. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, oh, if you couldn't get into the Empire Strikes Back when it originally came out, you could watch this film that came out one week before that won Oscar for best song and best score. Before, so this movie came out one week before, and it won best uh, Oscars for best song and score. Is it Star Wars movie? No, nope. this is okay. this is basically this is movie came out one week before Empire, uh, the Empire Strikes Back. Oh my God, what is this? I don't know. Super Wait, famous. Uh, sure. No, wait, that's way older. What am I thinking? Hold on, let me think. <laughs> Ice Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great movie. I love that movie. <laughs> Uh, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Is that your guys' answer? Or, you know, if you're listening, I'm, did you, well, are you phoning the audience? Well, I'm actually reading the answers from M. A. Carlson, so he may win. Yeah. <laughs> so, M. A. Carlson's answer is Indiana Jones. That that is not correct. It was Fame. I even gave you. I said it's a really famous movie. It's Fame. Oh God, um, that movie. the dancing movie. Yep, those two movies came out in the same month. So there you go. Uh, uh, last one here we'll do is uh, The Empire was filmed at El Studio in London at the same time as what other famous movie that ended up coming out one week after Empire. This film ended up being the first annual Razzie for Worst Director and Worst Actress. Worst Actress? I have no idea. Director for the Razzies came out one week after Empire. Worst I want to say like Return of the Blue Lagoon, but that's not it. <laughs> Worst director, worst actress. Man, it's got to be a bad movie then. 70s? That is relative, but go on. I don't know. Is it, uh, a, cult classic now? Is it a cult classic now? Uh, yes, it is definitely a classic now. Then I have no idea. 15 then, man. What movie was it? Okay, the answer is Wait, The Shining. Oh, really? Really? That kind wow. of movie? That uh, the director's, um, I mean, the, the original writer, um, did not like The Shining. 
he himself thought it was a terrible movie, a terrible interpretation of his work. So Stephen King did not like The Shining. Uh, oh, I and, there. Oh, I know yeah. that. So and and, and critics uh, <laughs> kind of agreed sometimes. But for a lot of horror people, like, oh, that's an amazing movie, but it still got the Razzie for the worst director and actress. Uh, there we go. Yeah. For, uh, so go. For, for olive oil. I like. I, I, <laughs> Popeye. Popeye. Popeye, Popeye was a oh, uh, interesting. I always think of Popeye as the, the first attempt at writing a superhero movie because Popeye is kind of a superhero from the comic books or from the comics, at least. So, um, mm. so that's my interpretation, though. So there we go, folks. That'll end the podcast here. So everybody wants to say goodbye. Say goodbye, and then we'll hit stop. Bye, everybody. Time. It's been good hanging out with you. I love you. Bye, 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 bye. and stuff. Thanks. Thanks everybody for coming and hanging out with us and watching. It was fun. Uh, there was a lot more people that thought showed up than than would, and that was a, it was a good conversation, you guys. Yeah, I'm glad especially, that, uh, for this, especially for this last minute kind of thing. Like you, you just mentioned this a few hours ago. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll do this. Why not? But everybody, thanks yeah. for hanging out with us uh, for uh, Little Bitty Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia, and uh, we had. Uh, Gary Rathrig, we had uh, Tasha, we had Jeffrey Falcon Logan on the show. So thank you all, everybody, everybody who showed up for chat in the chat room to give questions and, and watch and us. You got to give a shout out to the Invisible yeah. Beard. We have to yeah. give a shout out to the Invisible Beard. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, yeah he didn't make it, but still. Uh, so thanks everybody. You guys have a good night, and we'll catch you later. Uh, go read some other <laughs> <laughs>